Hey, it's Gary Delabate, Baba Booey. On Monday's wrap-up show, uh, we discussed the fact that Scott the Engineer's wife called in, uh, and we talked about what that all meant, uh, how she called Ronnie's new girlfriend Chippy, how we don't think she liked Ronnie, and I think we finally got an answer to what Chippy means and what she thinks of Ronnie the limo driver. We haven't had a good old-fashioned on-air fight amongst the staff in a little while. Long time, I like think. Like a good one, like a real one. Yeah, it was very real, and it got more real as it went on. Well, once what, listen, once wives start arguing, then it's a good fight. Well, let's let's start with that. So, Shuli goes in and does the update, and, the, and I think the premise was to talk about Sal. This is going to be a Sal bad Right, thing. right. <laughs> <laughs> and Sal, of course, and realizes that he's wrong and apologizes and sounds completely sincere, and that turns <laughs> into... Ronnie being in there to discuss it, and then Ronnie, of course, uh, talked about what goes on when they're there, and Scott the engineer, and next thing you know, Scott's wife's on the phone to to basically set the record straight about what happened, because she was accused of being the reason why Scott left early. And I've heard that accusation has been made before. Well, th- we should go back. I started to get on the microphone, but then I backed off. There's been tension between Ronnie and and Scott's wife for a while. And I forget what it goes back to, but it goes back like eight or nine years ago. Something happened where they were supposed to go somewhere and Ronnie wanted Scott to go and, and something happened and they, they used to go out to dinner and that stopped. And and I remember we talked about it in the air that they weren't going to be friends anymore. I wish I could remember what it was. Yeah. So there's been some tension there for a while anyway. And now she's calling him the dredge of the earth. <laughs> and Ronnie, you know, when Ronnie does it, you really want to go there. You could tell Ronnie's getting heated and they got into it. And well, I was going to ask this question, but I see a call already has it. So, Jeff, I'll give you the floor. Ask your question. Dude, oh, oh my God. What the fuck is up with Scott? He stands there and lets Ronnie trash his wife in front of millions of people and doesn't say a word. If I was at a party and a buddy of mine started talking like that to my wife, it would have ended with me punching him in the mouth. Uh, what's up with Scott? Why didn't he stand up for his wife? Well, that's that's very Scott in the sense that Scott, I, I've seen him before, and he's like, listen, my wife's her own person. This is her fight. I don't have to get involved in it. It was an awkward thing because you had Ronnie and Scott's wife arguing, and Scott is literally standing there silent looking at Howard. And I wasn't sure if it was what you just said, Gary, sort of this is her fight, let her handle it. Or if you, like, what was going through your mind as that was going on? Because you had to feel extremely awkward, Scott. Well, it was a little awkward, obviously, but uh, I mean, she called in and she, you know, was upset that they were making fun of me. That's, let's, she was trying to support me, which I really appreciate. Because she, you know, they were making fun and Scott doesn't do anything and he just takes the money and, you know, so I guess she was, she was upset about that. So you felt that she had your back in this conversation? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely had my back. So, um, and I appreciate that. So, she's a big girl. She could speak for herself. So, but did you ever feel a need to go, "Hey, Ronnie, whoa, whoa, whoa that's my wife." Whoa, whoa, stop the clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, but did you ever feel a need to? That's what well, this guy's saying. I did, I did, but I know that I probably would have gotten some resistance from from Howard because I know that he likes a good fight on the air. Um, I did want to stop him, but, uh, you know, did you feel he was out of line at any point? Um, they they were arguing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really think he was out of line. I mean, you know, it's gotta be weird too, because like, like who are you, which one are you closer to? (laughs) I'm not even going to answer that. Um, I do. I do have to say, Scott, that you, for, for my money, Scott had the funniest line of the morning, uh, Howard goes, uh, Scott, what do you think of Ronnie? And he goes, you heard my wife. He's an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) Scott, I don't think Howard would have gotten on you if you backed your wife up there. I really don't. I mean, you weren't going to. Of course I back her up. I mean, I, you know, I don't, you know, you know, she has some of her feelings and that's fine. I mean, you know, obviously she, you know. But do you think, I mean, he, she so held her own. Like, oh, like, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. So if she was- yeah, I, I didn't think that there was a need for, this isn't a party, and you do let stuff sort of air out. That's the point of her calling in. She wanted to get her point across. And I don't think this is a like, hey, 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 don't talk to my wife like that. It's never. It's not like he said, you know, oh, she's a fucking skank. Yeah, like, he, 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 had, he had an argument. She had an argument back. Yeah, Plus, I don't think Scott's with. unaware of this issue. My guess is. There's I mean, tension, right? We, we agree that between your wife and Ronnie, there's tension. Oh, well, <laughs> there is now. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, before, there was before. I do remember now. There's a guy up on, on, on the phone. But uh, I do remember. Th- this started when you wanted to go to driving school, right? 
No. No, I, no, I think it's... Uh, not at all. If I remember the story correctly, is when we first came to Sirius and we had that partnership with NASCAR, which both Scott and Ronnie were really excited about. And I think they had this whole weekend plan where they were going to get flown out right. to Chicago. Right, they were going to go to a race or and something. And they were going to go to a race and be in the pit and blah, blah, blah. And then at the last minute, Scott pulled out and Ronnie totally blamed it on Scott's wife. Right. And I think that's... I remember that coming up on the air. And I think that's where... Whether... Ronnie had tension with your wife over mm-hmm. it. I think by bringing it up on the air might have created tension with your wife against Ronnie. It, it might. I mean, you know, she obviously doesn't agree. Do you with- live there? You seem unaware. <laughs> 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 you know, Ronnie's wife, Ronnie seems a problem. Didn't he have a problem with Doug Goodstein's wife also? Didn't he have words with Marlo Goodstein on the air? Yeah. yeah. Did he, he, he call her like a bitch or something? Yeah. I, I don't know. It just I don't remember if it was that, but we're going to try and get Ronnie I down guess she liked, she liked R- Ronnie's ex-wife, and, you know, I guess she felt bad about the whole thing, and then... He's with a young woman now, and you know. So I guess she did. She doesn't, you know, she didn't like it. So this tension. Yeah, no, I, I, listen, I'm, I, I've heard similar. <laughs> I mean, my, my wife loves Ronnie, but she's weirded out by the thing. She's like, I, there was this woman that I loved that just has disappeared. So I'm um, even before that. There wasn't. There was the next day. So uh, you know, they didn't. Well, Julie did, but that's his deal. Um, Ronnie didn't have to work Friday, so and nobody else apparently did either. <laughs> What's it going to be like when you get home today? It should be fine. I, I don't see any problems. She got on the air. She, that was her choice. I didn't put her on the air. She wanted to argue with Ronnie, and she got felt that she had certain things to say. She didn't appreciate them trashing me, both at the show and on the on the air today. You don't think she's going to come it, down on you for like kind of letting Ronnie railroad her? Like like Ronnie was yelling and wouldn't let her get a word in. You don't think she's going to be like, "Where were you to to have my back there?" Or? <clears throat> In a situation like that, yeah, I would. <laughs> it would have been almost impossible to get a word in edgewise anyway. So she was doing fine. If she needed help, I would have stepped in, and, and of course I would have helped her. But I didn't feel that um, I had that, that she wasn't doing fine. She did well. She she expressed what she yeah, had to say. I, I mean, there's a part of me like if, if that was going on with me, I would have sort of stepped back and go, look, my wife's kicking Ronnie's ass. He didn't really. She certainly was holding her own, don't he, you think? Yes. He didn't trash her really. What you know? She brought up some things, and he responded. Um, you know, and I felt that she was doing fine. No, she came out guns blazing. I mean, she definitely dug into Ronnie immediately and didn't hold back. Which, if she's sticking up for you, I could see why. Well, well we- yeah, I, I like I, I like Robin, Robin Salem, Scott's wife, a lot. Like like Ronnie, his his uh, his girlfriend. But Robin, Scott's wife, did take the stronger dig. What do you mean? She she made a much stronger verbal dig than than Ronnie did. When when she she what she called Stephanie, what did she call her? I mean, I don't know literally what a chippy means, but that was the strongest. That, that chippy sense. means like uh, it's a young. Well, if you don't know what it means, then how do you know it's stronger? I, I don't know literally <laughs> what it means, but it implies like you she's know, younger and she's like you say, oh, the, he's with that young chippy. It's not like a whore. It, it it's does just like a, that no, it's more like a young. It's more like a young. It's a very old fashioned term, but it's, it's not derogatory that, though. It, but it's it not. It's not derogatory. It's a, it's a, it's a, there's a sec- I think we, someone can look up chippy. If there's a dictionary there, where will I look? <laughs> a dictionary from 1920 is what I need. <laughs> no, it's definitely it was definitely a shot. But it's, like, it's a little lower than a broad. But like <laughs> Scott was saying, you know, I guess Robin and Bonnie had a relationship, or maybe things were different. And now that she's gone and a younger woman's in the picture, she's not happy. Does that end? Is Robin- I, uh, I, according to the Oxford Dictionary, uh, the third definition for a chippy, it's North American, is a promiscuous young woman, especially a prostitute. Promiscuous. Mm. Basically called her a whore. Basically yeah. called her a whore. I guess so. <laughs> According to the third definition. I didn't realize that, she, uh, that was the meaning of the, sh- the word. Jenks, you're on the wrap-up show. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? I, I, I don't know. I kind of got the impression listening to that, that Scott, man, it, it, how could you not defend your wife or say something during that? I mean, mm-hmm. your wife, she's going to rip you apart when you get home for that. You know that. I, I, for what? I mean, she was she was defending herself. There was nothing more that I could do or say at that point. She was doing great. So I, I'm I gonna make a prediction. You are gonna come in tomorrow angry at Ronnie. You're gonna come in tomorrow angry because you're gonna find out what you did wrong. You're gonna hear about it tonight, and you're gonna come I, in tomorrow I angry. I know at why she called. She was trying to support me, and she wasn't, which is a great a great thing. And I, I agree with everything you, know, you just said. You're gonna come in tomorrow angry at Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie, what's your if what's your definition of a chippy? A chippy? Yeah. Does she, uh, I think uh, Scott's wife said that your girlfriend is a chippy. What, is it, what do you think that means? I guess it's a young girl. Who? Okay. So. 
Because we were trying to figure out how deep the dig was. You nope. pissed off at him? No, not at all. Is it awkward? Is your relationship with Scott awkward when you have this sort of? Well, was, yeah, I feel bad for him because I know he's going to go home and catch a lot of shit today. Why does everybody he's, think I'm going to catch shit? He says he's not going to catch any shit because Robin called in, well, stated her piece, and Scott th- didn't need to say anything. You should know, she held her own. There's a bunch of calls up. There's a school of thought that you were disrespectful to his wife and that he should have stepped in and told you to shut the fuck up. I was disrespectful. I was called an a- I, my that I'm an asshole, that I'm a shit, that I'm classless, and I, I'm be- I didn't say anything derogatory to her before that until she started that stuff. Dredge of the earth, okay. you were called also. Yeah, because yeah. she's jealous. Well, I agree with that comment. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, forget comment. it. You know, I, I could have said a lot more and I'm not going anywhere near any of the stuff that I could have said. Go down that road. I'm not. No. Just no one ever takes that road. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no. Yeah, Jason doesn't hesitate to take that road. <laughs> but no, first of all, I, you know, I, I, don't, I, I disagree. In one thing I disagree with Scott and I don't see how he says she called in to support him when she said that everybody on that show sucked and they were shit. Yeah, the I show saw, was shit. I, I sort of got that impression too that she was lumping you in with that. How, how does how does that I agree how does with that support? I agree with support, my wife. How does that support her husband? I don't agree with her opinion that the show sucked. Okay, and I told her that. You know, <laughs> when we were home that night. Um, <laughs> Did she complain that the DJ sucked and he only has three songs on his phone? Yeah. <laughs> I let her say it sucked in front of Shuli, but no, later at what, home alone, I told when you. Le- when, when you left. The purpose of the show is to do exactly what we did. But when That's you, the idea. But Scott, when you left that night, what was that ride home like? Did anything come up because Sal was being so crazy? Or, or Ronnie with the Ronnie She thought Sal was funny and she thought. Um, uh, Mad Dog, the comedian that we had there, was funny. He and, was amazing. Chris yeah. Russo? Yeah. What'd she say no. about, what did she say about Ronnie? She didn't say anything about Ronnie. I, he, I don't believe you. I don't yeah, either. On, I, do, I don't believe that you guys she, got in that car and Ronnie's name didn't come up once. No, she said he could be a little rough at times, but I mean, yeah, the I, overall, she didn't give me any um, other impressions, but the overall thing was the show, she didn't like the show. But what does that mean, a little <laughs> rough at times? I thought, uh, see, my, his language, my, my language. Yeah, and... I also I also think she was annoyed. Just it's just my opinion. Okay, okay I'm not okay. putting words in her mouth. My opinion was she was annoyed because at the beginning of the show, Scott usually does this dance, and he came to Shuli and said he really didn't want to do it because he was going to have friends in the audience. So at the first part of the show, I pointed these people out and I said to the, that, "Thank you for ruining the beginning of the show because Scott didn't do his dance." <laughs> I think she was upset with that. That was my personal thought. Because after that, she had nothing to say with me, to me the rest of the night. Johnny in Tampa, you're on the wrap-up show. Hi, guys. I just want to say, I don't want to say to Scott. Scott, that guy, Ronnie, is not a friend. I mean, he's a jerk. You don't get into an argument with a friend's wife. You stay away. You don't get your friend in trouble and, and, and run your mouth with your friend's wife. That how how do I get him in trouble? Old mommy... Because he got into an argument with your friend, and your friend is standing right there next to you. I mean, what's up with that? Why don't you shut your mouth, say yes, ma'am, and move on? No, I don't, I'm not going to stand there and, and be called classless and an you. asshole and everything else by somebody and just stand there and you take it. You got the wrong, you you got the wrong guy for that. I'm sorry. Right next to you. You do it for your friend. You take care of your friend. You, oh, you I did take care of my friend. friend. Believe me. Believe oh, me when no, I tell you I took care of my friend. You did not. Oh, yes, I did. You don't, you, know you, what, don't, you don't know, okay? You. All you do is call in and run your mouth also. You don't even know what you're talking about, okay? I know how to take care of my friends. Good. Well, then you go take care of your friends, okay? You do that. And, Ronnie, just to address that guy, Johnny, you didn't start in. Like, Robin called in to start yelling at you. And, well, I brought, up, I brought something up, and maybe that's what set her off. I said that I think, also in my opinion, that she thinks I'm a bad influence on Scott. For certain re- the reasons are, whenever we go out and we invite him to go, we invite her also. Never comes. It's always Scott comes alone. See, I don't think that she thinks she's a... See, this is what I get out of it. She doesn't think that you're a bad influence. She doesn't like you. Exactly. Which is, there's a difference. Well, it's, it's, to me, it's the same. If you don't like me, you think, uh, you know... Well, it sounds Whatever. like it's more about the divorce and, and you moving on in life. But, but there were but, issues before that. Well, okay, but I think that maybe was the final nail in the coffin. Well, hold on. But God. the other thing, I just wanted to say, Ronnie, you didn't attack his wife. Like, you didn't go after his wife. And no. You didn't throw him under the bus no. either with anything. I didn't. Right. That's why I didn't think that I would. I if he started where, attacking I her, I would have... I came from. I would have right. come to her defense. But, I mean, but... 
she was doing fine. Well, um, we're sort of talking around it here. I mean, Scott, yeah. does your wife not like Ronnie? Apparently. Yeah. No, don't give no. me apparently. You know the answer to the question. Either she does or she doesn't. Well, you know, she no, she doesn't like him. Okay. I don't think that comes as a surprise. There's no surprise. I think she ex- expressed that today. Did, did you mean, know that, very Ronnie, clearly. for a long time? <laughs> uh, I never know it until, you know, a 100% till he just said it now. Well, you knew it from this morning. Yeah. I had my feelings, but he just confirmed it for sure. Obviously, I've been talked about that she doesn't like me. Obviously, because I got divorced and I moved on with some, you know, younger girl, Chippy, Chippy. which is like uh, never, never heard of in this in this society. Scott, before did she Ronnie, not? Oh, yeah, sorry. I think we're asked the same question. Did did Chief have these feelings for Ronnie before the divorce happened? Like, did she always think he was a bad influence? No, no, not at all. So when that happened, that was sort yeah, of... Yeah, I guess a, she, she doesn't... I mean, you know, she doesn't obviously agree with what he did. So. If Stephanie eventually gets old enough, do I you mean, think she'll like Ronnie? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if the woman that he was with was a little older. I don't know. People get divorced. The marriages don't work out. I, I get it. So, but I, I guess she didn't like the fact that uh, she's a lot younger than he is. I'm Scott the Engineer, and on Tuesday's wrap-up show, once again, I got my ass handed to me because... I wanted to go bowling, so I asked a question if I could have some days off to go bowling, and here's what happened. We should start off with Scott Salem's quest to bowl, and I know we had a lot of Scott on the wrap-up show yesterday, and we're going to have a lot of Scott on today, simply because he's in the crosshairs, and... It was sort of the perfect storm today because Scott, I would imagine, was fired up about what happened yesterday. And the news broke the story that he had emailed Howard about uh, there was a new PBA event and he wanted to go and Howard had gotten an email. But that was at the tail end of this. What what I heard, and Gary, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is Scott had talked to Doug Goodstein, yourself, Tim Sabian, everybody who basically said no to him, yet he persisted until he got a message from Howard, which basically said no. Now, Scott's argument, and I see him running down the hall now. I wonder if he's going to be as fired up as he was in the studio. Scott's argument is a simple one, which is, and Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, no one said no. People didn't answer. People said maybe, or we, we got to talk to this guy. We got to talk, but nobody came out and said, no, Scott, you cannot do this. Well, t- okay, today was the uh, classic example of be careful what you wish for, because what I do know is, is that Scott was talking to a lot of people. And I, I, I think I, it would be fair to say you, Scott was trying to flush us out on the air. He, I, I, uh, my understanding was he was trying to generate a news story that would get this to come out of the air. I think the hope was that it would come out on the air and he would get to go. I, Were you I, lobbying I, the news, Scott? I be asked, honest. No, I asked about it. I asked Brad last week. I said, Are you, I know Shuley did the story. Are you going to bring that up on the air? I asked him. I didn't push. I asked him. So, but it sounds like w- through the news, talking to Gary, talking to other people, it's like you were talking to everybody here about making this happen. And again, you're passionate about bowling. You, it's something that you want to do. Right. But was this an instance where you did hear no and just kept going? I never heard no. Again. Well, what did you hear? I heard Doug said, I asked him, I e- asked him, he put it off. I sent him an email. He didn't respond. I said, okay. Um... So Doug never gave you an answer. No. So Doug, Doug Doug's answer was, well, if he was, if he didn't respond, that's probably no. Okay? Right. Okay. So that's your that's first. That's Doug's a good, world. That, that's a pretty good. That's hand. in Doug's world. I never ask Howard anything. No, no. But okay? but, but you I would, never bother him. Step with anything. away. Step away from this. Okay. Being as close to it as you are, right. and think about it some other way. Think about it like I went to Howard and asked for the day off for something. I wanted to go to the Met game, right? And Howard didn't answer me. What would you think? What would you say to me? Either he didn't get the email. <laughs> Or he you just know he didn't want to. He, he or or the, keep going. He didn't want to answer. Right? Why he, would he not want to? He want to look like the bad guy, which right. he said on the air. Right? He said, "I which don't want to look Scott, like the bad so, guy." Scott, but what to me? Wait, wait, to Scott, me, not Scott. answering is looking worse than a bad. You guy. don't get Scott, to call been, the shot, Scott. You've been here a very long time. Okay, I have. and I don't. I, I, well, I would on. normally not bother Here's anybody. The thing, okay, anything. If I email Howard something and I don't get a response, that's a no. I, I I know it's a no, and, and everybody think, here knows. Does that. anybody else think differently? I, no. I think differently because sometimes I take it as, and not necessarily Scott's kind of situation, but I th- take it as, it, it, it's like, oh, should I work on this or that? 
And if I if if it, if there's not an exact no yet, you're not sure if this is the. But you're insane. This is still perfect. You right. understand that? Like you yes. you're not you're an outlier. Yeah. You're insane. Be- it, he's right in a way because if Howard you. really <laughs> wanted you to work on this or no, that. No, I know. But, he'd but, respond but, to but, you. But I think sometimes Howard doesn't give a no because well, first of all, he generally doesn't give no. That's true. But I think sometimes it's just like it's not necessarily a bad idea. It's just not for right now. But he usually right, so don't say, do it right now. He'll he'll usually say, "Or look, I know I've sent stuff in," and he'll be like, "Hey, you know this is good. Maybe Fred can help polish it up, or or let's go in a different uh, angle." Like he usually does give suggestions. Me, and, and the other issue here is why is Scott or frankly anybody going to Howard in the first place when the protocol, as Howard said today, was you got to talk to Gary first. Always. Let me go go through it. So the, the the Doug thing, Doug said probably not. He didn't get an answer. I waited about a week, um, and Doug said, "Let's see what happens." So. After a week, Howard was doing stuff in my studio, so quickly I said, um, I know Doug sent you a note, what do you think? Did you know that that was on camera, by the way? I had no <laughs> idea. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it looked, it was on camera, it looked like Doug was there knowing you were going to ask, and that was, and it was engineered that it would be on camera. I, I didn't even realize it. Hmm. Um, and what did Howard say? He said, now he could have ended it all a month ago by saying, uh, I, I, I get that you want a bowl, I don't like the idea, we did it last year. Uh, I'm sorry. I saw the tape because he's not answered the question. What did he say? Uh, you know what, Scott? I can't talk about this now. I got to yeah, deal with some stuff, and he lied. No, I, no, right. That's what he said. I right. said he would. He could have ended it by saying what I just said, <laughs> right. but he said, "You know what? I'm going to go in the back. <laughs> it, it, I'm tired." He avoided you. Yes, first, I'm crying. Of course, first Scott, this. Really? Scott. This is Fitzsimmons logic. You're using. I was going to say. Yes. Of course, he avoided me. And I didn't appreciate didn't that. Didn't you think that <laughs> Greg Fitzsimmons sounded like an idiot when he went through his whole thing with the book and how it... I mean, didn't you think so? As an objective observer? But Greg's, Greg doesn't work for him for 26 <laughs> years. Because okay? you sound exactly like but, him right But now. Greg doesn't work for him for 26 years. All right, so uh, this how, is like maybe the first request in all that time that I've made like All right, this. so Howard avoids the question, what's your next move? He said, let me talk to Tim and Gary. So now you're waiting on Howard so to I get waited back again. to you? I can, give you a, I can give you a little bit of background on this, by the way. I can give you a tiny bit of background. Scott came to me to ask me about it, and I put Scott off. Right. I he knew said, no, no, so he hold on, said, hold on. Let me finish right, here. Go ahead. I knew the answer was no. Tim, for some bizarre reason, took... I said, Tim, did you talk to Scott yet? Because he came to me. And Tim's like, yeah, well, we have to discuss it. I had to remind Tim <laughs> that we had discussed it. So Tim was a little slow getting the answer. And I could have said something to Scott, but it was, it was actually... It's Tim's place to say it. Like I, I didn't right. want to cut Tim's legs out. Tim is the one who should be having the discussion with him. And but but and then when I heard Tim this morning when I was talking to Tim and Tim said I said Tim what did you say to him and he goes not a good idea I told him no I go well did you tell him no or did you tell him it's not a good idea and while I don't think that Scott should misinterpret it any other way not a good idea is no I don't know why Tim didn't just say the answer is no right so Tim didn't say no to you but he did say as I a, don't on, let, he said let me advise you as a friend. So but you, even you said today. But even you said you're not his friend today. Well, I'm not his friend. But what does that mean? I mean, does it? I, I, it sounds is like it giving me like an unofficial answer, not officially. What do you yeah. think? You, what do you think? You man? want uh, this is like Richard Christie does it sometimes. Listen, I'm, I'm you being, want this I'm so being bad very particular you, here. Yeah, you want this so bad that I, you don't I know, want to read I know between that, the lines. I, I didn't want to read between the. You lines. You know what you are? You're the chick. You're the chick. Okay. at the door who's crying and go. Tell me to leave. I yeah. won't believe that we're over until you tell Listen, me to leave. So okay, he leave. said drop the issue. No, really? He said drop the issue, so I dropped the issue. That's Howard's, what happened to you guys. Howard's not interested in covering it for radio, television, fine. Right. I got it, okay? Let me see if I can get some vacation time off for those three days that I needed to... Okay, so do. so let's let's pick up there. Yeah. Who in the history of the show, of the, ma- of, of the very main players, do you know that's ever taken vacation time when the show is on? Robin. Well, actually, she didn't, but Howard, <laughs> I just thought of this. Howard actually moved his vacation so Robin can go to Guatemala. Right. We, we, last you- year, he moved a vacation week for her. She had to go to Guatemala... I got it. You know that. So, so you think so you, you think that you that, you, think well, that you, you asked me a question and I gave you an answer. But, I, but the, I didn't expect him to move the week. No. But, but then why'd you bring it up? Well, you you, you answered you answered a, you asked me a question. Okay. Who should should show, Howard have moved the week? I didn't know. He shouldn't move. Okay, well, so actually, then actually okay, let him move the week. No, no. no. So we got that. We got I, So I you, so him. let's say Howard said yes to that. You don't have an issue taking three personal days or two I don't know how many days during a week that we're on live. You have no problem with that. Well, 
Someone and using do you your think office, about, your board. Yeah, do you think well, about the message it sends in terms okay, of you so, needing to be here? So one time I was out for a medical issue for, for a few days. Which, uh, which right. absolutely, no, that's, that's what personal Last dangers. year he sent me to Vegas, so I was out for four days right. for that. So obviously someone did fill in for me those two times. Um, I, I just made a request. I didn't think making a request was such a horrible thing. It wasn't. The request isn't a horrible thing. The not taking no the first five times you sort of you got a mostly an, an eighty five to ninety uh, percent so no I, and not hearing what you want to hear. That's where it gets I see weird. I'm in a uh, minority here. But <laughs> I, I I just thought that I I wanted to go, okay? No, that we got. Yeah. That's I, I, I got that you wanted to go, and you were being, what, what you were was being very, you started to become passive-aggressive about it, like you got to tell me no, when everybody tried to tell you no in a way that wouldn't hurt your feelings, right. that wouldn't make you feel bad, that wouldn't be dicky, and then it all came to this today, which nobody really wanted it to come to but you. And you stormed in there. There was angry Scott who walked in there today yelling at Howard, well, telling him who, I mean, so, you were putting Howard so in his place. the thing started five or six weeks ago when I first was approached and I asked the question, and the answer, if I would have gotten five or six weeks ago, that would have been the end of it. But no, most no, people, but over. everybody Done. but you thought you did have the answer. The, well, no. I didn't get an answer. You got an answer. Tim. You just didn't hear it. Tim, were you giving Scott friendly advice, or were you, were you politely telling him, no, drop it, move on? I was politely telling him to drop it and move on. And because we, it, the thing is, is that, we, you know, we have an, a, a modified schedule now and, you know, we all need to be here, period, end of story. And I told him the time that I was in Minnesota when I came late uh, because of my father and Howard was giving me, you know, shit for that. But, but, it's, but it's right. I mean, you know, right is right. We're here to work. And, I, I get and the show it. Is on, when the show is on, he needs I, us here made to a request support the show. I thought wasn't unreasonable. Nobody's saying that. I We're saying an that you got today. An, no, you got an answer five weeks ago. I didn't get an answer from but Doug and a, from a Tim. non-answer is no answer in my world. But you okay. eventually did get the answer of no. They don't want Howard TV covering it because you said you came to this conclusion somehow, right? Well, so drop once the you got bowling the, issue. Once you got the, the bowling issue for, for right. the TV and but then, radio, so, which I did, and then you oh, no, continued no. to try. When to, you're told to drop the bowling issue, and then a day later you put in for vacation to go bowling. You're not dropping the bowling. You're dropping the TV angle of it, trying to get well, a free trip, but you haven't dropped the bowling angle. Trip that uh, has nothing to do with. I, know, I get that, but, th- do you, but do you recognize that you want this so bad that you may not, you may not be thinking clearly because you do want it bad. I understand of course that. I do. And, of I, and, I, do. and I, I'm I, still disappointed, but I understand that. Yeah, they want me here. I, they need me here. And by I'm, the way, but but it seemed like in a Sal sort of way, it took Howard to come on in the air, say you know what the hell are you emailing me for? I am saying no. Uh, Doug's in the room. Gary's in the room. T- you talked about. Okay, Tim. I needed like, to be hit over the head with a hammer. Did you that, really though? Well, no, I. I Ninety-nine percent knew the answer was no, obviously, but I gave it another shot, thinking maybe I could change his mind. You know, maybe you know he's like, all right, you know, for this. So you did hear no then, because you're trying to change his mind. Well, I didn't hear. I he- heard no for the what I heard no for was the TV and the radio don't want to cover it. It's not interesting. It's boring. We don't need to cover it. I think people are missing the the larger context of of, of, of this. Isn't just one Scott incident, and you know the ability to read between the lines or or, or or understand what someone's trying to tell you something in a nice way is essential, not just to work on the Howard Stern show, but in business in general. But I think that this has nothing to do with bowling. This is my whole oh, theory. You're such on this. A- Douchebag. Well, I mean, really. <laughs> Wait, should, should you don't like hey, my theory. Uh, is, hold on, let him let him oh, let, give, let him give a theory. Do you not want me to say it's not about bowling? Or it's all about bowling, Scott. Of okay, but it is. I think he has a real problem uh, taking orders from Tim. I, I've seen it. I see. I know that Scott got upset. He wanted to hire somebody one time, and Tim said no, and he fucking flipped out about it in a re- very real and scary, loud way. Uh, I know. It's one time, Tim asked Scott for you know. If he had any ideas on upgrade a studio, Scott gave him some. I know Tim took some of the ideas and didn't take some of the other ideas. And I know Scott flipped out about that. Why do you ask me my advice if you're not going to take all my... I think the real issue is between Tim and Scott and has nothing to do with bowling. Well, well I, 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 I think... Well, my opinion is is that there's some underlying issue with Scott that he feels a victim and always a victim. And there are certain things that go on in, in our area that you know there are processes in place and things take time like equipment needs to be approved but scott instead of asking would rather blow up and pop off than find out what the real answers are but there's some underlying issues that you i think you feel victimized all the time i really do you're a good guy i like you and i try to work with you and try to you know develop a re- relationship with you when i hear that you know i'm not your friend when i, I i'm not here to be friends but i'd like to get along with people that i work with uh but it just i think you like to put yourself in a victim state so that's that's my opinion okay well 
that's fine. That's your opinion. Getting back to what Jason said, of course, it's a thrill to bowl with professional bowlers. If you had some passion, or if Gary was given an opportunity to play in a real baseball game with the Mets. I was or, saying, my, my thing was like, I got to go on tour with Bruce Springsteen. That okay. would be that would be the same thing. That's we'll a, that's let a, you go do it? That's a passion well, that's, that I have. Or, or Bruce said, Gary, come to the... the yeah, I want you to play show. sax for me Not instead play of sax. Clarence Clemens. Come stand on the side of the stage this day. I want you to be my personal would guest. God, would Howard let you take a week off of work to go play saxophone with Bruce Springsteen? He would, no. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> but the, and then Okay, but I, I approached this as, we did it last year. Howard sent me out there, which was... But that question was answered pretty, pretty early. That, it's, that it doesn't work for the show. Okay, but that's fine. I get it. And the PBA said, regardless of whether the TV show or radio show is covering it, you're welcome to bowl. That's what they See, this is where you fall off the tracks because nobody here cares what the PBA thinks. <laughs> well, I'm just telling I'll be you. Very, I'll be very blunt. Are you aware what the PBA <laughs> I'm is? I'm just telling you. What, <laughs> I'm just yeah, telling police, you. Police benevolent association. <laughs> I was offered yeah, again. I, no, we understand that, but right. they, we know what they called. want. But we know what they want, but that has nothing to do with what we want. I know what they want, too. I mean, you know. Don't they have authority over the situation? <laughs> but what, Scott, what about what Tim said? I mean, because Tim's not the only person who said that before. Are you playing the victim all the time? In fact, in fact quite honestly, it was said pretty often before Tim ever worked with I us. I don't try to play the victim, okay? I don't, no, I don't try to play the victim. It's um, leave it to the victim. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Scott. No, I don't try, I don't want to be a victim, so... Um, it's, that's all I'm going to say on that. Well, because what Jason was also inferring is that there's an underlying thing going on between the two of you. That's what I There's think no doubt right. about it. And, and at, at some point, I don't know how much time we have left on the rap show, but at some point, it, it's you guys are going to have to deal with it because I see it every day. And there's a thing going between, I don't know, I, I think that both of you think the other one doesn't respect each other. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think there's a missing level of respect coming from both of you. And, and you guys won't talk. And about I'm not it. saying that Tim doesn't respect <laughs> Scott. I'm saying I took Scott out to lunch the other week. Yeah, I, I'm I, saying that t- Scott does no, not feel respected I by think, Tim, and I know I that I'm Tim friends. doesn't feel respected. I think we by have Scott. disagreements. I mean, I try to request something. I'm not, I don't want to get into it on the air. That's not right. But this guy just took you out to lunch, and he said, and then you go right back and say, "I'm not his friend." Did that hurt Tim when you heard Scott say that today? I would imagine that it did. <laughs> Tim, take me out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your friend. We'll work it out. Are you guys <laughs> on Facebook? Are you friends? No. <laughs> uh, Scott untags pictures no. with Tim. The Saban. bowling is strictly me and not anybody else. That it, <laughs> you, you know, it's friends. a great thing in my life. Um, I get it. I get it. it. It really has nothing to do with anybody else. So, it, it, it personally, it was a great experience, and I wanted to do it again. Okay. What, what, I, what I would say is, I think that that every single person on this show could come up with an example of something that they really wanted to do that would that would make them be away from work. I know, but they, they don't have that, have that opportunity. And they I have, have the opportunity. No, we've all had the opportunity. Now, Richard, I'm, I'm almost positive that Richard's had opportunities to go on tour for three months at a time. Oh, three we, months. I mean, well, I, I, I mean, listen, it's I a passion, three right? Three days. <laughs> Well, you know, um, but I mean, we've all had, like I said, I've had the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. It's okay, been, so w- I've been given the tickets, and I was I was invited to go on somebody's private jet. Like I and told it you, still didn't get me home in time. I don't think it hurts to ask. Okay, you've been here so long. I don't think it hurts just to at least ask and and get an answer that somebody respected your answer. And I all I said was, somebody could have come to me and said, "We appreciate that you want to go, but we'd rather have you here with the shows this week. We need you. You're important to the show." But there's but, no knowing that, and no one appreciates no, right, that. That's right. We. we yeah. <laughs> There's no knowing that because it was said well because he told you to finish. Scott, who's your issue with? Is it with Doug? Is I it with think, Tim? Is it with Howard? Howard? Gary? Jason? I, I think it's with Howard because even even before when he was arguing with Tim in the hallway, he said all he needed to do was give me the answer and this would be, would have been done yeah, five Howard, weeks. Howard ago. said on but the air he didn't want to look like the bad guy. I, I mean, maybe he looks worse by not giving <clears throat> not giving me an answer. Do I'm you giving think pro- that's the case? <clears throat> I, I feel that not giving me an answer is disrespecting me. And anybody else he doesn't give an answer to. Well, that's the way he works. That doesn't work for me. I mean, I get it. I don't make requests from him. I don't. I think this is the first request I've made in 26 years. But do you, it's, directly it's, with it's him. not. It's not. And I, I can't think of the others. But, but do you think that a, a, every office operates any the differently? Same? Yeah. No. I, no. I, I mean, yes. I, I think that people would make a request and they would get an answer. Um, but, to be, but you're, to you're, be ignored... You're, to be ignored is worse than but, getting a no. But what about if your request is unreasonable? I don't think it was unreasonable. That's the thing. I don't think it was unreasonable. But I, and that's where I think there's a really big difference. It, to to say, can I take time off after you know that it's not good for the show? I understand that part. But I want to take time off to go do what I want to do. You know, we all want to do that. That's it, an unreasonable request. 
Uh, with this modified schedule, it's even more important that right. we're here for the shows. It's even more important that we're here and we don't miss it, unless it's an emergency, a personal family emergency or some type of emergency. Hey, I'm Medicaid Pete on Wednesday's wrap-up show. We talked about B.B. Jones and other things that came up on Howard's show this morning. Check it out. I do want to start with B.B. Jones and what happened with her. And, uh, Gary, I think a lot of, not a lot, but a few porn stars come in here and they'll say, oh, they'll bang anybody, they'll do this, they'll do that. I guess Tabitha was certainly one who was more who put her money where her mouth was. But with B.B. Jones, Ew. she <laughs> is willing to bang anyone, anywhere, anytime, unprotected. And That makes her a little tiny bit less attractive to me, but she's really a very pretty girl. <laughs> but to some people, it makes her even more attractive. Well, you know... I don't know. It's 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 easy and quick, but uh, do you really feel good about yourself when you're done, or do you care? Well, that's, some guys don't care. You see, that's the question. If you're young and single and working on this show, this seems like a pretty good. You can bring your own condom. This seems like a pretty good opportunity. <laughs> right. Yet, Ganji, JD, Benji all said no, and well, I want to know why. Howard didn't understand. I sort of got where they were coming from, and and I never really had to deal with this back in the day, but. The whole, you know, I, I think that I understand Benji saying like girls will say they'll Google you. They find out you banged a porn yes. store and it's, you know, they're like, hey, I can fuck a lot of guys. Why should I fuck a guy who fucked a porn store? So again, we're we, the other thing is, too, we're like deep in the porn store world. We're not in porn, but we know a lot of porn stars. And, you know, there's some people who there's some women and guys who've never met porn stars and they think it's a really dirty business. And I'm just saying it's a perception of other people. So I think I sort of get like I, I really understand Ganji saying that girls have Googled him. I found out he fucked Kendra J. Yeah. yeah that's Ganji, Ganji, yes. your, your checkered past really has done some damage. <laughs> it seemed. So uh, just a prime example, the last girl I was dating. The first thing she brought up on our first date was that she Googled me and saw that I slept with this porn star. And what did you, how do you, how, she, how do you she deal with that? She wanted to know about it. And I'm like, So what do you say? I was like, Oh, yeah, it was a really, really long time ago. It wasn't that major. And I do the whole, Oh, she wasn't a porn star at that point. She was only a stripper, which made me feel like in my mind. That makes it so much better. Right. It was a year after strippers. me that her and her stepmother banged Jerry Springer and taped it. Really? <laughs> right. Not to, did anyone ever bring that up? No, no, because they don't ever make that connection. But all it does is you see like Kendra, porn star, and I slept with her. And that's the first thing that literally comes up when you Google my name. And the other thing is, you know, so it, it causes a problem. I mean, like it freaks regular well, girls out. How many times does that come up? I'd say two or three times. And they girls can't look past that, huh? Regular girls have a problem looking past that for some reason. See, now for JD, I, th it's different because... No, it's not. It's you've same thing. You've dated a porn <laughs> no, star. No, I didn't date her. You like, liked her and I, you would have dated I, her. I, listen, I like... Uh, yeah, I've liked a lot of uh, what, what was girls. that girl's name? That The the, the one that you were pretty Kimberly friendly? Kane. Uh, Kimberly, Kimberly Kane. Kimberly Kane. So, like, you, you, would you go out to... Would you take Kimberly Kane, say... To Howard's Christmas party, if you were dating her, uh, yeah, if I was dating so her, so she's sure. a porn star. The girl today is a porn star. What's the difference in in the way people look at you? Uh, I, 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 because I, I don't know. You got me. Cr <laughs> no, but I think it's a legitimate question. In other words, you're willing to date porn stars. Yeah, listen. I, well, first of all, if she, if she has the sex with a lot of guys. But I like a lot. But Kimberly many Kane, porn stars, yeah, well, many they, porn they, stars do. That, 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 uh, it's. Um, Protected, she, she's having sex with the. Uh, so it's the unprotected. unprotected sex. That's a big thing. Okay. And so, first, the second of all, uh, I don't think she's interested in me. Otherwise, she would have gotten back to me when I tried to contact her. No. I, I, I didn't try and contact her like once and, and never again. I, no, see, I, I tried to call her a couple times. I texted her. I think uh, you played that all wrong. I don't think she's really interested in anybody. I think you have to call her, remind her that you want to have sex with her, you want to talk dirty to her. I think that. What, I think, what, what, think you, you have to work it. Well, wait, 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 I think she's putting it out to everybody. She forgets who she talks wait, to. Wait, JD, what did you do? Like, how did you try and get in touch with her? I called her. And uh, what'd you say? I one, left the, one I can't time. I left the message. Uh, uh, and so, did you expect her to call you back and go, "Hey, JD, let's rock out with your cock out"? She left me a voicemail wanting phone sex. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So, what'd you do? I called her and I, I left her a voicemail. <laughs> I remember why. But I how said. long after? Probably that in the next morning. <laughs> but you didn't try. <laughs> as to, soon as after I got home from work, you didn't try to text her or follow up. Besides that, yes, I did. Well, how? What did you do? How many times did you try to like, text I, I, her? Like a few, and but you know, if you don't get respond uh, a response each time, you know, what are you gonna do? So, at what point did you give up? 
Uh, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like a month or so. But how many times would you say you tried either voicemail or text? How many times? I would, like five times, maybe. So yeah. you're so if you had gotten a hold of her that night and did a little phone sex, do you think you would have made the next move into actually meeting up with her? Sure, probably. Maybe I See, now, uh, I, yeah. I Benji, See, you weren't here, but the question is: you three guys, you're single. Like, why not go for BB? Um, I when Mar- Marianne from Brooklyn called and said, "How can you say it's a stigma? It's not a stigma to me, but it's a, it's a stigma to uh, how other women. Why do you look care? Because you don't how, you don't usually seem to care about those things. I I, I care because I think BB is very attractive. I don't know her personally very much. She seems cool." But it's like for basically like a one-time thing. Like maybe she's in New York twice a year, three times a year. I don't know how often. Okay. So for this one-time fuck of a, of a hot girl, is it worth how much harder it is going to make for other relationships? But, but, but Benji, you've been on the air and, and openly talked about you know, anonymous sex that you get off of websites. Why is that so different? First of all, I don't do that anymore. I don't, <laughs> I don't bring it up anymore. And I don't do it anymore, <laughs> first of all. But but second of all, it is different when it becomes a very tangible, real thing. Oh, sorry. When it becomes a very tangible, real thing with a person that people know who it is. Right. Now, I, I have interesting breaking news. I don't know if this has come up. And I checked with Howard to make sure it was cool to bring up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she rejected Pete. How so? What? She said she wouldn't fuck him. <laughs> when did she say that? This is what the... Uh, now, I'm getting this secondhand from TV guys. Pete, get over here. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I didn't t- know you were in here, so, so I don't know I, if you know this. And this is what I heard, so maybe maybe it's not true. I don't know. No, I that's first I've heard of that. Well, hold on, but before it's, let's start. How did you leave it off with her? I um, I said sure. So did she did she give you a number to contact her email address? No. <laughs> so no. So, so how how are you figuring you're going to get in touch with her? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I I I mean I would have um, would have thought signals? that yeah. <laughs> Ganji, you're you're like one of the main guys at Howard TV. What's going on here? Is this true? I I I don't know. The, the the behind the scenes guys were following them around, so I'm assuming that that's when it happened. So uh, Benji, what do you know? Well, this is Lee. He's he's one of our uh, TV guys. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Not much, Pete. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> about this news, what, what's uh? So oh, so Lee know. told me. I I, yeah. I said to Lee, this was maybe he's coming down. I'm sorry. I said to Lee uh-huh. Garowitz, I said, oh, did uh did Pete leave with BB? And he goes, no, actually, she said, and, and Pete, just say it that, that she didn't want to. She wasn't. She wasn't interested in having sex with 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 Pete. Now I don't know if she just said just Pete specifically or anyone here, or I don't know how that goes. And I I, I did. I saw Howard on the way out because I wanted to check with him to make sure it was cool to bring up, yeah. and you know he said it's cool. So, but I didn't get that firsthand. I mean, she clearly agreed on the air. I mean, after Pete serenaded her, and she was all up for it. Uh, Doug, do you know what's going on here? Yes, she <laughs> Doug. is claiming the can't open... hear you. How's that mic? What? Oh, the thing on my face. The open sore is the problem. <laughs> Not his. What lungs. is that, by the way, Pete? We were sort of talking about that. I don't there's, there's actually know what it is. I, I I went to the doctor yesterday and had had it checked out. And, and he said what? I got some antibiotics. So <laughs> what did he say? So it was just like a like a some sort of pimple that I. That I uh, squeezed and, and just passed all over, and uh, so do you, that might be the reason why. Pete. Do you think the open sore is an excuse? No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I will tell you that we looked at it before, and Pete, don't take this the wrong way. He does sort of look like an AIDS patient. Oh. You know what I mean? With a, with a big sore. I'm serious. How does he take that the right way, Gary? <laughs> a handsome AIDS so, patient, though. No, so so maybe she doesn't know you the way we know you. Yeah. And maybe, <laughs> obviously. And, and, obviously. And, so, and so I look at that and I go, you know, Pete banged into the wall or something. But maybe it's a little scary to her. But this is a woman who who doesn't mind unprotected sex. We finally found that. Yeah, Bibi so that, that's kind of weird. Bibi has a line and Pete is that line. <laughs> He's the Mendoza line. Yeah. So, so if Ganji yeah, ha- if Ganji has this sore or Benji has this sore, let's say, do you think it would have prevented this from happening? That's Ganji, a very, pop a pimple real quick. No, that's yeah. a very good question. I don't know. I don't know. Jo- John, I guess the question you're asking is, is it the sore or is the sore just an out in general? That's right. Well, I mean, would she we could ask her, like, will you do it when the sore is healed? Yeah, well, based on her rap today on the show, I I wouldn't think that that would stop her, but I, I guess I'm wrong. 
Shilly, do you have breaking news on this? I don't know. I was just going to confirm uh, what Benji said, because I interviewed her after uh, she got off the air, and she confirmed <laughs> with me that, uh, yeah, she was she was not down to bang Pete. But did she tell you the, the lesion or the yeah, sore? Yeah, she the- says, I don't know what that sore is, and I said, I think it's just a scratch. Could be AIDS. I don't know. <laughs> See, that, don't you think BB should have had the class to tell Pete face yes. to face, or at least let him know before she left? That's not right. Doesn't sound like the the conviction of a girl who fucked a janitor at the movie theater. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe yeah, you know, you say maybe she felt, you know, maybe it wasn't the smartest way to do it, but maybe she felt it was nicer to say yes on the air and to reject. And then to just never call him again. Yeah. Pete, well, Pete, would you <laughs> rather that, or would you rather her tell you face to face? Um, face to face. <laughs> Rather than uh, second hand, you know. Well, but, that's but, not. Um, but hey. second hand is not her fault. That's that's my fault. That I I didn't even realize you were here. Right, when he I wouldn't said even that. been aware of it if Pete yeah. wasn't here. Then he would have never known. He would have just kept calling her and texting her for a month. We're yeah. just kidding, man. She's gonna fuck <laughs> Thanks, you. Thanks, Gare. Huh? We're just kidding. She'll fuck you. <laughs> Are you giving me shit or, or? Yeah, but I just want you to feel good and stuff. Man. We'll get you laid. What's the all right? Well, come on. No, I'm confused. <laughs> no, no, I'm we're confused not, was, too. Just we'll get you laid. I'll get you laid. I'll get you laid today. Pete, Benji's trying to let you down easy here. Essentially, she said that she doesn't want to bang you because of that sore. I mean, that's yeah. what I don't comes know. Down Listen, to. I this is like I said well, everything I, mean, I heard. If that's hand. true coming from her, then 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 that's obviously true. But but you know, now, do, you, do you think maybe know. she sensed that you wanted more than just a banger, Pete? Because mm. I know a lot of times you sort of go down the relationship route once you meet a girl. Well, you know, I, I was like, I, I, after the show, I was like, you know, well. Well, to the camera guys, I was like, well, we'll see where this goes, you know? It's not a guaranteed relationship, but, you know. I don't think of her and think of the word relationship at all. <laughs> at all. Just like, <laughs> like, you know, have some fun and make, make you know, one thing leads to another. Uh, I do, you're already going too far for her. <laughs> because she did say if she banged you, she wanted you to leave right after. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take offense to that. That's he, the, you but know, that's that, not that, that wasn't just you, Pete. I mean, she that's said what she that, wants. That's what she wants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the way she operates. I mean, yeah. I, but I mean, yeah. do you understand that this is this yeah. is a pure yeah. sex thing? That it's not a relationship thing. And I mean, certainly for her, and I figured for you, this is like let's have sex and then beat it. Do you understand that, or do you think that it could be more? No, no, I, I, I totally understand that that, that it would be just you know because you just two seconds ago said let's see where it goes. Just let's <laughs> fuck and then and then but. You know, conversation can, can you know, if, if... You've already gone too far. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I... She doesn't want to have a conversation. Who knows? Who knows? But who I don't knows? know if this is Pete's fantasy at all. Like, to me, a girl like that, know. a little bit of fantasy would be, you'd be so fucking good and so blow her away that she'd like, fuck, I gotta fuck this guy. Yeah, again. see, I've never had that fantasy. Yeah. I don't think I could be that good. <laughs> I think you could. I don't know. All right, let's go to the phones. It's worth the shot. Jim, you're on the wrap-up show. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the one guy with the balls to fucker's got a damn open sore. <laughs> Jesus, I, I, I can't believe there's guys, single guys, on the Howard Stern show that won't fuck this brawl. Hey, I always forget your name. It's, I know you're from Jim? NC. This is Jim. Jim, Jim, yeah. But sure. Jim, Jim, do you have a girlfriend or? Uh, I do. Okay, so let's say you were single, but you were in our position or like, we're not exactly famous, but like reality show famous. So in something... a New York minute, Benji. What's that? In a New York minute. <laughs> but wait, so, right. so Jim, knowing that if you fucked her, that on Monday we're going to drag in the studio and go, you fucked her, we want every little detail, we want to hear about it. <laughs> so now everybody that listens to the show will know that you had sex with this porn star who sleeps with a lot of people and a lot of them unprotected. That's, that's cool for you? Well, it brings notoriety to yourself and it's something for the show and you're working for the show. You've got to do that kind of thing. Look no, at you her. don't have to do no, it. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's fantastic looking. I mean, she is, but it's like, a one-time thing. It's a basically a one-time thing. Jim, are you saying that... That, that makes it harder for next time. Thing. Are you saying that some of the guys right. on the show aren't fulfilling their obligation? <laughs> Seriously, because <laughs> that's exactly. what it sounds like. We're not being team players. Right. We're not fucking B.B. Jones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Gary, you and Howard should actually make it a stipulation. <laughs> that somebody that Someone's got to get fired. She's going to be there in Flushing, New York. She's going to be there all weekend. All right, I'll do it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and so about 50 other guys probably. if you knew it wouldn't be found out, I think you said. Absolutely. If she came up to me at a bar and I didn't know she was a porn star, or even if I kind of found out that she was, and it wasn't part of the show, we were somewhere else, I would absolutely Okay, but Okay, so let's take this a step further. You probably know how to get in touch with her. Yeah. Without anybody knowing. 
Would you ever try to pull that off? No, because I feel like it, nowadays with the Howard 100 News and everything else, that's not a possibility. <laughs> Back in the old days, absolutely. Yeah. Things can be kept quiet. I, nowadays, no. I did try contacting <laughs> yeah. her without anyone knowing, and she didn't just contact me back. Right. Can I ask JD a question? Oh, God. JD, would you be more into her if she was only into you? Like, does it bother you that she was like, she was was somewhat somewhat into me, period? I I, I don't believe that she was into me. And her, I I believe her thing she wanted me to fuck me or whatever was was her, uh, you know, she didn't mean it. But if she, if you, if she, if you thought she did, and she wasn't interested in Benji and me and fifty other guys, but only you, would you go through with it? Uh, maybe. I uh, there, you know, I I'm taught. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you maybe. don't you don't like when they don't show you the only uh, the attention. If she shows attention to anybody else, you don't like that. Uh, uh attention like that, it's a little weird. <laughs> you know, like you know, I'll I'll fuck. Yeah, Pete. Same question. Something like that. I don't know. Yo. Yo. Same question. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favor. Just repeat the question. No problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> I don't feel like that's not the first time in his life he said that. <laughs> JD is saying that it makes a difference. Like someone asked, "Well, why would you go out with Ashley Dupree, who was a known escort? Who who knows what she, she did?" She was a before. former escort at the time, by the way. <laughs> a known escort, and who knows what she did at the time, versus someone like BB, who's just you know admits to what what she's doing. Would, would you? Is there a distinction between the two for you? Um, yeah, somebody that that doesn't admit it, I would I'll be more inclined to uh, to probably go out with you know. Whereas someone who uh, who openly <laughs> who openly admits it, you know, that that would be a little, I don't know, I'd, I'd be a little skeevy towards that, you know. Well, let's say you know. got together. I mean, the sore thing didn't happen, and you got together with BB. Would it bother you, like, if she went on to the next guy, like, like she talked about today, she bangs a janitor, she bangs somebody she's in an elevator. Would you feel like protective of her because you had been with her at that point? Would I feel protective? Would it bother you if she went to like the next guy? If she ran into Ganji and say, "Hey, let's let's go bang," and she's just coming off of you know being with you, um, just sort of, kind of, in a in a, kind kind of a kind of a weird way, yeah, I'd be be concerning, somewhat. Uh, I mean. Yeah. And, what, you know. what, what's the question you just answered? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the question again? No. Um. <laughs> Benji, I can yeah. imagine you can relate to what Pete's saying. You- yeah, I, dude, I, listen, she's, she is physically beautiful. I want to fuck her. I want to possess her. So I get that. Yeah, you want to be the one. It's the same thing. Like, look, there's, we could easily, I don't know how much, we could take 50 bucks, we could take a couple hundred bucks and go pretty much fuck any girl we want of a certain caliber, a prostitute. But it's not hot. Because it's like you're paying for it. And there's something about this, a little bit in a similar category, there's, if there's nothing special about you, if you're no different than like anyone else, right. it's not as hot. Right. I'll agree with that. Thanks. Rosie O'Donnell's on the phone. Well, first of all, Rosie, congratulations. Uh, you got an excellent write-up in the Post today about your new show. They're saying it's a breath of fresh air, the blah, 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 going on and on, raving. Hollywood Reporter, excellent review. They say the show is not sterile, that things are being mixed up, that you never know what you're going to get. 
Well, that's always good. You're getting hit reviews. Oh, that's nice. I just woke up. I haven't read anything, so I'm happy to hear that. Where are you now, in Chicago? I'm in Chicago, in my very cold dressing room. With Oprah's staff. Now, here's my prediction. Go ahead. And I don't know a thing, but this is, a, I have in- intuition. You got a hunch. And you can deny it if you want. I might. Oprah's staff likes things. Is it Oprah's staff? Yes. Rosie was given Oprah's staff. Listen, it's a very successful staff. Okay. But they like doing things where everything is very packaged, very produced. Rosie likes to let things evolve and happen. And Rosie's Rosie. She's not Oprah. She's not Oprah. I predict within a year. Rosie, all new staff. All new staff. <laughs> <laughs> That's my prediction. Well, you know, you're not going to be psychic of the year because here's the thing. It's uh, only about three of people from her senior staff. Okay. And the rest of them were all young new kids who had worked at her staff for about five to eight years. So they're in their 20s, most of them. So they're quite, quite trainable, right? But I will tell you, you're right about initially they were worried about the fact that I don't use the prompter because normally they have a prompter and everybody follows it in the right. control room. Right. right. And, and so that's the reason we went live, Howard, which I think you'll understand better than anyone, is um, all the practice shows, you know, I would do something and then after, uh, you know, we got to go, we'll be right back. And they'd say, we're going to have to do that again. I'm like, why? Well, you forgot to say NBC is the voice. Right. I'm like, oh, dear Lord. That's not so, going to fly with you. Okay, so Thursday, after the test show, I had a meeting with Lisa Erspalmer, Palmer, who's, you know, one of the head, head Oprah people. She and, and Sherry Salata, like, ran it for 25 years, ran her show. And uh, my two executive producers and I was like, okay, listen, I'm not willing to trade something real for something fake. Uh, just because something's real and has a little few flaws in it does, make, does not make it less valuable than something that's perfect and sterile and ridiculous. Right. And... They're like, well, how could we fix that? I said, we could go live. Cut to, they said, okay. Which I never thought they would do, because they thought they'd be worried that I might, you know. The whole show is live. Live, live. Wonderful. Is this going to kill you? I'm saying (laughs) right now it's fun, you know, the first show. Yeah, it's the first blush. You've been back. You've been having a great life. You've been enjoying uh, hanging out. Yeah. Is this going to kill you? I, I, I pray to God it's not going to kill me, but I, I was hanging out for 10 years, Howard. So what? That's a lot. 10 years, man. I'm doing nothing you tried. It's not easy. You, you were going stir crazy. Listen, you know, my kids were raised. They were all in school. My, my youngest is, is, you know, going to be nine years old, and I didn't have anything to do. I, I was, can't keep you know, up with you. You, you baffle me. Why? Be- because uh, you know, Rosie and I never had a private conversation, really. I really? mean, you know, I mean, not where we got we we've threatened to get together for dinner, but there's always never a, did. There's always a complication. Oh dear, but, but she's hard to re- schedule with. Yeah, you she had, is hard to schedule with. But she is. She's difficult. <laughs> but yeah, you fascinate me. I do. So well, when I, when I came into your life, you were yeah. you had met a new you had a new girlfriend. Yeah. She moved the whole family in. She had yeah. six kids. You have four kids. Yeah. You were blessed. You she said didn't, to me, she didn't move them in. They moved them next, we, they moved next, next door. door. You yeah. were in the process of what you called doing, blending the families. Yeah. Now, somehow that relationship ended. Yeah. And then. Which I believe was predicted by you. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. because you were going probably insane with her six kids. Let's be honest. That's too many kids. You know, let's be honest. You know, you have a vision of what you think would work, and you, you, I remember that movie, Yours, Mine, and Ours, with Lucille Ball. Right. And I thought, well, how... <laughs> That's what you were thinking. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. This could be perfect, right? What? But honestly, you know, it was a lot of kids, and that's the truth. It was, it was a lot of kids. It ruined the relationship. I would say ruined, but it didn't allow for any time for she and I to be together alone, and, uh, right. you know... There, there were lots of kids with lots of different issues. And, right. You know, I got my own four, and they uh, have their own challenges, right? And um, so it, it just felt to me like chaos and, and too much. And she's a lovely, lovely person. So in other and- words... You saw this movie and had the idea. The kids didn't see the movie. That was the problem. <laughs> no, but they right. did see the, the one with Steve Martin, Cheaper by the Dozen. Yes. Now, was it complicated when you had to go, like when you broke up? I can't even imagine the hassle. First of all, you got to move her out of the house. You know, Which I'd, literally she did in uh, three days over Christmas. It was very quick. And then over Christmas, you had to go up. and oh. you had to go over Christmas, no less. Oof. Then you had to go to the kids and say, "Listen, remember the movie I watched." <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it doesn't work like yeah, that. Yeah, that was the movies, kids. 
<laughs> yeah, now we have a different movie to watch. Was so, that a horrible... Uh, no, because, you know, the kids knew. The kids knew in the beginning, like I said, you know, here's the thing, you know, we're going to see what happens, and, right. and I love Tracy, and we're going to see what happens. And so the fact <laughs> that we didn't live in one house, I think, was helpful in, in terms of them not feeling as, you know, uh, upset or they, they sort of, you know, there was a separation, and, and there were, it wasn't like we did every holiday together. In fact, we didn't really do that. I took my kids and, and did what we normally did, and she did what she normally did. And Tracy had to be brokenhearted because, listen, nabbing a Rosie is a big deal. Nabbing, I love that. Well, let's be honest. You think I'm nabbable? Well, l- l- listen. Well, you're, you're acting a, like she she lost no. a Porsche. She's a big. Well, yeah, <laughs> Rosie's a big star. <laughs> She is the pride. It's more like a Hyundai Sonata, Robin. I don't know if it was a Porsche. She is the home run of home runs. She's wealthy. She's, uh, you know, listen. She's she's everything a woman. She's also a a good person. Yeah, right. So (laughs) when you broke up with her, it had to be the worst. Well, just so you know. It was not, it was, she made the decision. It wasn't, you know, she said, uh, this is not going to work for me and I'm going to go. Well, in other words, you acted so miserable. No, I I just knew, I knew, you know, I knew fairly early on that that a a long time future and forever wasn't in the cards and that I loved her very much and I care about her kids and I care about her life and, you know, and what I think we, we ended up wanting different things. Although in the beginning, it was a great, immense love affair and it's wonderful to feel those kinds of feelings and I had you know been in a relationship for a long time that towards right. the end was kind of you know when people are about to divorce it's it's uh, a couple years of rockiness right so th- and here's what those- else baffles me what's that okay so this whole moving to Chicago thing I don't get now Parker is in military school so he's covered uh- and loves it. Can you really? believe this? A military. School. I cannot believe it. Truthfully, he's been asking since he was eight, wow. and I was wow. Yeah, obsessed with everything. I like, can tell you everything General Patton ever did. Could tell you who was in what war, what countries, and why. And do you I think he'll some- become a military guy? That's what he's always wanted. And, wow. you know, and I, I was really concerned, to tell you the truth. He's 16. When I left my show, I kept him in first grade twice because I wanted him to sort of, you know, get relearn and have focus. And I wasn't home during my, uh, you know, the show. So right. he did first grade twice. So he's older than most of the kids in 10th grade. He's 16. Most of them are 15. Right. And when bin Laden was killed, he was awake. We were in my room. And I really was panicked that something huge was going to happen. You know, like they it dropped the nuclear bomb because the president doesn't give a press conference on a Sunday night. Right. And they announce that he's dead, and my son goes, oh, shit. And I go, what, honey? He goes, I wanted a shot at him, Mom. <laughs> and he was now, this dead is some serious. kid. This is some kid. Now, serious, here you, you are know? a peace, Nick, right? You, you are someone. Totally. And, and this kid is rebelling by becoming a military uh, guy. Well, that's what I said. I said, how do you piss off your left-wing, liberal, pacifist, lesbian mother? <laughs> you join the military, you know? But, and like, and you were the you t- want to stay home and get drunk and have crazy sex with right. your parents? He's like, you know, yeah, I'm going to do that as well, Mom, but I first want to serve my nation. I'm like, okay, baby. Wow. You know? doesn't, you, do, doesn't this blow your mind in the sense that you were the type of mother, from what I could understand, that was up this kid's ass? I mean, the, he couldn't make a move without you. And yeah, then all, I'm madly in love with him. And all of a sudden now... He's moving out of the house He's at gone. 16. He's gone. Yeah, it wasn't really all of a sudden, you know. I mean, he he's seen every movie about military school and stuff, and he saw Taps, so I'm partially br- blaming Tom Cruise. But he saw Taps, and he was like, Mom, I want to go to that school. Is he into and guns? Then, excuse me? Is he into guns? Well, he'll tell you every caliber. He's never wow. shot a gun. We don't have a gun in the house. But he knows, like when we're watching a show, he'll go, oh, Mom, that's a 15 millimeter CC from a Nighthawk Fire Ranger. Pa-. He knows. <laughs> is he is he is he into hand to hand combat? Does he take uh, karate and all that? No, but he's into football and athletics, and he's right. you know he's very sort of cut, and he's like a, he looks like he belongs in like when I saw him in his uniform, they had the graduation right. from the you know plebe to the cadet, and I was up there two weekends ago, and I was stunned. And here he is, like six foot one. He lost twenty pounds there. He's fit. He's he's cut, and he's so happy. Wow. And, and, 
everywhere we went, like I took him out to dinner to celebrate, and we're at some steakhouse up in Valley Forge, and, and uh, people in the waiting, you know, to get a seat said to him, thank you for your service, because he looks like he's in the Navy. Right. Like wow. And wow. He goes, thank you, ma'am. I'm still a cadet, but I will pass on that to the uh, men in the arms. <laughs> he, he, he would spend the whole thing, you know? Wow. He called me ma'am once, hour, and I almost had like an aneurysm. You're kidding. I'm like, honey, you do not ma'am me ever. This it sounds is disrespectful like disrespectful to this, ma'am your mother. You're not kidding. This sounds like, um, um, like, remember that show with Michael J. Fox? He was like a Republican, but his parents were hippies. Oh, he's not a Republican. No, but In I'm fact, saying, I'm saying he comes from this piece. You know, you yes. you were even you personally were upset that they killed Bin Laden because you felt he deserved he's a trial. To war. You wanted a trial for him. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to know if it was legal in the nation, you know, that we live to do this, right? right. I questioned whether or not it was legal. Is it legal to do that? Right. Right? And, but he, and he's a Democrat, though. My son said, he goes, Mom, in the whole school, there's like five Democrats. He said, I get into the greatest discussions about, <laughs> you know, what's going on politically. And he grew up in a family where we discussed politics at the dinner table. So he's well-versed in but what's here, going on. But here is the turnaround in your life. You yeah. left your first show, which was very successful. Because you wanted to be home with the family. The kids were young. Right. Now, all of a sudden, you're living in Chicago. You got your one daughter with you. Two of the daughters are living with Kelly. Uh, a daughter and a son. A daughter and a son are living with Kelly. Well, they're doing half time, right? So the, the oldest boy, Parker's away. Chelsea's living with me. And the two little ones are doing, you know, half and half. I feel I like do- you're free and clear now. <laughs> with the kids. I mean, I feel you're back to being, uh, you know. She dropped them all. I feel you got, I feel you got everyone sort of in somewhere and stashed away, and then you're running around in Chicago. Yeah, I'm at all the gay bars, dancing until 3 in the morning. No, you have a new girlfriend. Exactly, who you will love, Howard. Because remember when uh, you were saying to me, hey, did you have a crush on Beth? And I said to you, when she did The View, and I was like, no, she's too perfect for me. I could never, I'd be too intimidated to go near a woman who looked like that. Cut to, I'm in Starbucks, and I see this woman in front of me, dressed perfectly, very Beth-like, holding a puppy, and I have a puppy just like it, and I was thinking of getting another one for Chicago, and I thought she was a straight 28-year-old, because that's what she looked like, and I start talking to her, and I'm like, you know... And by the way, this one, just so I'm clear, this one doesn't have any kids, right? No kids. Perfect. All right, go ahead. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Yeah, and you're not Uh, having kids with her, right? uh, Not at the moment. All right, go ahead. uh, yeah, so so she's holding the puppy, and I'm like, you know, I got a dog like that. Where did you get it? And we start talking, and I said, here's the thing. Were you, you hitting on her? No, because I didn't think she was gay at all. I do, you know, it's like if she's got a Beth vibe, honey. She wears high heels and Prada belts and a lot of jewelry. Like, I thought she was a, a, just a straight girl. In so line, your gaydar right? wasn't going wild. Honey, not only was it not going wild, it didn't even register a possible blip. But what did we explain, But why did you start talking to her? Because she was beautiful? No, because, no, because of the dog. Exactly, because yeah, of the but dog. Listen, it Rosie was, sees 50 people a day with dogs. She tells them to fuck <laughs> off. Why did this one she's all of a sudden talking no, to? I'll tell you why. Because I have a four-pound chihuahua, and she was holding a three-pound Pomeranian. Right. And I wanted to know if it was full-grown, because, you know, I, I can't bring the big dogs back and forth. So I have a little chihuahua, and my daughter, Chelsea, who's living with me here, I want Want to get her a little one so Missy would have a friend and blah blah blah. So what? So is, so, I, so so when you're talking to her, yeah, does she recognize right away it's Rosie O'Donnell? Uh, I think so. Okay, yeah. well, go ahead. But she didn't say it, you know. And she's but, wearing a little hot dress and she's got high heels on. No, she's got she's got like jeans that you know you know your thigh don't touch kind of jeans. Right, like and she's 28. No, she's 40. 40. She looked she looked 28. Tight right? ass, big boobs, the whole thing. Honey, you, you're a dream girl. I'm really? You. Remember in the studio? Who does she look that, like? Uh, Julianne Moore. Oh, my. Yes, red hair, green eyes. So you're talking to her. I'm talking to her, and I said, you know, here's what happened to me. I got a little chihuahua when I was 33, and the next thing I knew, I had a son. So you're probably going to get have a baby soon. And she, uh, you know, told me that she was trying uh, to have a baby. And, you know, and I Uh-oh. said, oh, well, you know, maybe your husband. But she said, oh, I don't have a husband. I'm a lesbian. And I laughed. Right. I was like, <laughs> I said, that's funny. Bingo. I said, you're funny. What's your name? And she said, you know, Michelle. I go, no, seriously. She goes, no, I am a lesbian. I go, you're a lesbian. If you're a lesbian, you're one of those lesbians for 14 minutes. You're not a real... She says, I've been out since I'm 24 years old. Wow. I'm like, and how old are you now, 28? She said, no, 40. I go, first of all, I thought it was Ashton Kutcher on punk for a minute. <laughs> this is too good going, to be true. Well, yeah, and then I didn't trust her for a while. I'm like, Well, what do you mean see. you didn't trust her? Because, like I said, I was intimidated by the beauty. I was a little thrown by the, I don't well, know. Well, Kelly was beautiful, but you're talking about a whole nother level up. 
Kelly is beautiful, and it's it's not about levels. It's just about she's very much of a girl. I've never dated a woman who is so much so of a girl. feminine. Exactly. So wait like, a second. You meet this girl in Starbucks. Yeah. Oh wait, here's a picture of her. Oh yeah, pictures flying. Oh in. yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you enjoy that, Howard? Oh yeah, baby. I thought you might like that. I thought of you. You'll bring her over to my more place. More than once. We'll more get than her, once, Howard. We'll get her in a bikini. Oh yeah, she has a few. Oh look at her. She is lovely. Yeah. Is she wearing a wedding ring with you? No, she does not wearing a wedding ring. Does it, it appears to be. Wow, we she's some knockout. Yeah. She's you know how to handle like something like that? Howard, that was my concern. I was like, hey, hey, what am I... You I meet her in Starbucks. How long before you take her out on a date? About two weeks. What did you do? You started texting and calling? Yeah, you know, my my uh, daughter was uh, in the hospital for a while, and so I was going back and forth to the city. What is that all about? She's all right? Yeah, she's okay. But, she, you know, for my, my 14-year-old. And so I was in the, and out of the city a, a lot for like a, a month. And, uh, you know, so I, I didn't really have any time. So we talked for like two weeks on the phone and, and texting and emails and stuff. And then That's romantic. And it are you was. Like, are you burning with desire for her? When, well, when I was text? nervous, Howard. I was like nervous. But like, you were thinking about her a lot. And I was also thinking, could she really be gay? Like, you know, but then as we were talking about, you know, her life and her relationships, and I was, like, very, um... You found you yourself know. fantasizing about her? Uh, yes. Alone in bed? You touched yourself thinking about her? <laughs> Well, Howard, you know. I mean, that's um, okay. There's all kinds of influence you can buy to help you do that. But no, I, oh, I know. Robin teaches me. Oh, stop. Yeah, well. So, okay. So, you're Robin thinking about her. Woman. You're texting this and that, and you say, let's go out on a date. Well, yeah. She said, can we, let's have dinner, you know. Where'd and you so take I was her? Like, uh, to a sushi restaurant, but in my town, because, you know, I had the kids and we had some stuff going on. So, she came up with her puppy. Right. And met, met three of my children the first day. Because what I thought was, you know, if this has any chance to ever be anything, it, it comes with three kids. It right? was and clear it was so a date, you, though. you introduced the kids right away. But she doesn't fuck around. Oh. No, because, you know I, what, Rosie does. Rosie falls in love, like, in a immediately. day. Immediately. Yeah, like, she doesn't even, like, date that much. As no. soon as she meets anybody that she's slightly attracted to, she moves Boom. them right in. They're well, in. I went on four dates. You'll be proud of me, Howard. Ah. Right. And, like, <laughs> in the last, like, you know, since I've been divorced, which is, like, four years, right. I went on four dates with people I did not move in with, so I'd like to oh, have good. a round right. of applause. All right, that. so there is but, some discriminating. Right, but when I say when I go on a date, here's how it goes. I go out to dinner, and then if I don't have feel that thing that you're supposed to feel, like, right. oh my gosh, I want to, like, get to know you, I want to sit next to you, I want to snuggle, I want to, you know. Right. If I don't feel that, I then that's done. You it's move like, I don't, on. And that's right fair. Away. But that's fair. Right you, away. you say to them, oh, this was a nice time, I'll get in touch with you, and you never call, right? Well, you know, because I'm a lesbian, they end up texting and we're friends. But right. I make it clear that, you know, I'm not particularly interested in anything other than that. Women are so good with each other. They're so sensitive that way. Like me, I would, just, be friends. I just would never write the person and hide. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, I, used to, I used to do that with therapists. Whenever my therapist pissed me off, I would change my phone number and just never call them back. <laughs> that's healthy. I, I, wish, I, 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 I wish I could learn how to do that. Yeah, that's a good trick. I, I think you should use that. So then, so you go out on a date. Where do you take these girls to dinner because right away it becomes a story. This is in your neighborhood. No one squeals on you. No one yeah, says, hey. Ni no, in Nyack, it's very easy. You yeah, know right. that everybody, I've lived there a long time. What'd she wear on the date? Was she wearing like no yeah. panties? Uh, no, no. They, she's got some thong action going on, but um, right. no, white jeans and a black shirt and heels that I could not believe a human could walk in. And no bra. And, oh no, honey. Believe me. Oh. She's, She's got the bra underwear matching sets, La Perla, something that she she's taught me about. I now have matching bras and underwear, <laughs> color coordinated, but, but, with lace. Does it make you feel good? It does, and yeah. I'm shocked. So wait a second. This girl, you go on the date, and I know with, uh, with the way you've described it, you like a nice big buildup sexually. You don't want to like just get it over with in two seconds. Oh, no. In fact, it, no. It was right. not... Uh, there was no chance or time. You know, I was... So then after we went out to dinner, all it was was a kiss goodnight, and then we With a went tongue? Out. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Come on. I'm, I'm 49, Look at you. honey. Wow. What am I going to do? Peck her on the cheek? No time to waste. <laughs> there were three kids sleeping upstairs and one in military school. I couldn't exactly, uh, you know, bound chicka bound bound. And besides, I was nervous, Howard. Do you initiate the kiss or she does? I did. Well, good for you. Well, I was nervous to do it, though. But you knew and she. You knew she wanted it. If she's going all the way up to Nyack, she she wanted something with you. I mean, you uh, yeah. Where does the kiss happen? Out in your front door? 
No, on my living room couch. I, I oh, walk wow. in, the kids are waiting because the kids were playing with her dog, and you know the kids are waiting. Hi, hi, and mm. I'm like, okay, everybody, up to bed. Mommy right. will be up there. And- <laughs> yeah, but it's four o'clock. <laughs> so, so you, so you, so they go up to bed. You get her on the couch, and you make out with her. No, we don't make out. We one kiss. That's right. I said, I go, that's what I said to the kids. I go, you guys go up to bed. Mommy will be up in a half an hour. And she has since told me that when I said that, she thought to herself, oh, she's not interested. Right? Oh. But she put it, right. right. But I wasn't, I, what am I going to say? You know, I have, I have the kids. They're waiting in my bed. No, that's they're, very respectful. Right. So Were you burning I, with desire? Well, I was definitely wanting to kiss her. Right. Oh, and she's I did. A, she's a knockout. I'm staring at the picture as you're talking. She's beautiful. She's and inside and out. She's so great with kids. She's really lovely. She's smart. She's kind. She's got her own. You know. She's got. Like, so when do you finally her. bang her? It, it took a free, few months, Howard. Few months. Because because you like that buildup. Well, I was going back and forth to Chicago to in the in the you know early parts of the summer to set up the show. Even you know right before the summer, I was going back and forth, and then second you know, date. Second date, you feel her up. <laughs> no. Just kiss well, again. We made out, made out. Oh, my day. God. See, women, when they're with each other, they love a slow build. Oh, you're kidding? And then all I've... the letters about how great the kiss was, and then talking, and then send right. me a photo. Where <laughs> are you? And, oh, oh, look at oh, that. Oh, my God. It's romance <laughs> times a thousand. Did she sext you? No. No? No pictures of herself uh, over the text with her legs or her uh, Oh, panties. no. Nothing? Well, no. Come wow. on. What, uh, you're not a skanky that. hoe. That's not hoe. That's uh, fun. Well, before you even make love to the person, yeah. they're going to send you pictures well, of themselves naked? Not naked, but, you know, a little yeah. something. So, all right, so you make out for a long time on the second date. Third date, I'm going to say by the third date, fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, now you're burning Howard. with desire. No, let me tell you something. It, here's what it went from. Kissing, kissing, kissing to, could you come and uh, spend uh, two weeks with me? Right. It, it was and, time. So and all then, four dates were just making out. Where'd she come to, Chicago? Just kissing. Miami. We went to Miami. Oh, the house the, in Miami. Yeah, which is really, uh, the, that's the house. Every time I pull in, I go, who owns this place? Right. Oh, crap, it's me. And right. when she saw that place, it was romantic time. It was romantic time. But you know what? She's got her own thing going on, honey. What does she do? Money. She's an IT headhunter. Oh. And she's like, you know, one of the most successful people in that field. And that's attractive. She, I like that. Yeah, she's got a lot of uh, her own money, cash, life. She's got a Beamer. She wears all these designer everything and jewelry. And I'm like, where'd you get those earrings? She's like, I bought them. Sounds I'm too like, good to be true. Yeah, a little bit. And that's and I was that's what I was a little bit like going, where am I going to find the trap door? Where am I going to hear? It? By the way, I was arrested right. for impersonating Julianne Moore and stealing $50 million. Have you ever dated someone who had that type of personal income and was able to support themselves that the, you know, in that fashion? No. So this is a new uh, avenue for you. It is. And, and then you say, and then the insecure. In charge of everything. So then the insecure. Exactly, inse- Robin. I'm not the boss. <laughs> so then the insecure part of you becomes a little more secure because she could afford. She doesn't need your money. So in maybe you start thinking she really loves me. Well, I don't think, you know, Kelly didn't need my money. I mean, Kelly comes from a trust fund baby. She was a very rich kid, right? But, you know, Michelle grew up a very similar kind of financial way straight that that I did, although she was in the most western part of upper New York State, right? So, Is she a gold star lesbian or has she been with men? What is a gold star lesbian? Gold star lesbian is a true lesbian who has never even messed around with men. Oh, I didn't know that term. Absolutely. I didn't know that either. And I, I just coined it. <laughs> oh, it's Three seconds ago. Gold star but, lesbian. No, seriously. No, I, I mean, no, she's not a gold star lesbian, nor am I, Howard. Well, I mean, you've messed around with some men, but very, very, uh, very yeah, but superficially. I, I did the deed more than once. Well, you tried. No, honey, I lived with a guy for over a year. Oh, did I know that? When I was 28. Uh, and you enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. You enjoyed sex with this guy? Very much. You didn't want to throw up and go, and you weren't thinking about women the whole time? (laughs) No, you know what else I enjoyed? Going, like, to the supermarket with him, like, before the football game on Sunday and getting, like, the beer, chips, and nachos and having the cashier say, oh, how long have you guys been dating? And it was, like, all of a sudden to be accepted in the world, not having to have who you're with be invisible and people pretend they didn't know. And, you know, listen, it's a long time ago. It's over 20 years ago, right? So you're bisexual. No, I'm not. I'm definitely gay. Right. 
but I see a handsome man, I'm not dead. You know, I look at this as a sexy, hot guy. I go, look at him. I don't necessarily want him naked in my bed, but I would like him to maybe tidy up around my house. It must be painful for you when you're around me because I'm so handsome. <laughs> I'm telling you. It must be confusing even, for you. If I even went close to you, Jeanette Barber would have my head. Because did the guy get you off? I mean, did he? Did you? Have, were you able to have an orgasm with him? Oh gosh, yes, honey. No kidding. From a pe- from the downtown, it's not like lesbians don't function without the right car key. No, but I have you know? many friends who are lesbians who say to me, like the thought of the penis going in them is so repulsive. Oh really? Yeah, that they can't. No, even... well, I don't think that could possibly be true because there's a lot of. Yeah, who are you talking to? I have I have where, friends. Where is this? What are you, women who... Uh, all right, that's the second thing I made I, up. I figure. You gold star lesbian in that. Star and all of your lesbian friends who are repulsed by penises. Well, but I have male friends who are gay and who have said to me, like, they, 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 quite frankly, they go to me, ugh, pussy is disgusting. Okay, I have a friend, Dan, and he went for the first time when he was like 30 to a bachelor party at a strip joint, and he was there and his friend supposedly didn't know he was gay. The woman was on the stage, spread her legs in front of them, and he said loud, and everyone heard, oh my God, it looks like... Like roast beef. <laughs> right. They, right. That, well, I would imagine it would be the same for you. You see a penis no, and you're like, ugh, filthy no, penis. No, not at all. No, no. So, so now you get her to Miami. None of the kids are there with you. Uh, honey, all the kids are there. Wow. And she's going to come for two weeks and stay with you? Yes. And go in the bedroom with you? Yes. That's a bold move. And here's the best part of her. So we're we're in, second night. We're in the bed. The kids. I've put the we've put the kids to bed. They're asleep. We're in the bedroom. All of a sudden, knock, knock, knock. Come in, and in comes Vivi. I can't sleep in my room. And I'm thinking, oh dear God. And then in comes Blakey. Mom, if Vivi's gonna stay in here. And, and the hot girlfriend is laying there in lingerie and yeah. Ay, yeah. Ay, ay, and you know what she does? She goes, come on, and moves over. Oh, that was a good move on her part. Not only, it's innate. It was an innate thing, and I thought to myself, this is so perfect, right? How was the first night of making love? Awkward? Because I know you're shy. Were you Correct. Able, were you able to get off, or were you so shy I that was- you... You dry I up. was, I was, no, no, honey. No, well, mommy's on bioidenticals, and trust me, downtown Niagara Falls. Because but, you're on um, what? Biomedical? Bioidentical hormones. Beth doesn't have this yet. When she gets to be my age. Is this because of menopause? Yes, honey. And it, what, it, it introduces female hormones and makes you wetter. If you don't, if you it don't, it keeps have everything hormones, working. It makes. Everything Are you on work. it, Robin? No, I'm fine. No, you're not. You've yes, told I me am. you've had to use KY. Never. I lied. No, you didn't. I did not. She made that up. That's like <laughs> the, the, the Astro Glide star hetero. Do you have to worry about safe sex the first time you're with her? Like, do you guys go get checked out or you have, you have to do dental dams and all that? No. Dental dams? Yeah, dental you know, dams. You know, it's very, very rare for a woman to give another woman a sexually transmitted disease. Well, it does, can I tell you what I just read? It doesn't happen. You want to know, know what I just read? What? That when oral sex occurs, like if I go down on a woman... Uh-huh. That now they think it's a leading cause of throat cancer because what? yeah, it was in the New York Times. I'm not making this up from some tabloid. Oh I'm talking about goodness. the greatest newspaper in the world. Uh, if you go down on a woman and you get the human papilloma virus in oh, your well, throat, that's yeah, you get throat cancer nine well, times honey, out of ten. But that's if somebody has HPV if they right. have warts, right? Right, which I would hope you would notice while you were downtown. Please, <laughs> what about when we go down there with a flashlight, honey? You could. I, I, I have my eyes closed. Warts, babe, warts. They're very. You could feel it with your hopefully very skilled tongue. So you you're telling me the first night she comes to Miami. Kids go to bed. She marches herself up to your bedroom with you, and lovemaking begins. Yes, but honey, we had. Oh, I was already in love with her. Right? Oh, I understand it, it, you're in love. She's yeah. there, but now it's time to physically act out your love. Yeah, right. And so, does she remove? Do you remove her clothing one piece at a time, very slowly? Oh no! Like Howard, this feels like a penthouse forum letter. D- well, of course it does. Is, let me tell you this. It was really, really lovely, and like everyone else, when you're initially with somebody and you love them and you first have sex, it's kind of awkward because it's a new person and you don't know. And it, and then as you're together, it's you know it, better and better and better and better. And no better. vibrators. No. Just fingers. Just body parts. Just doing it, just like you and Beth. Wow. No toys. No toys. Nothing. Pure, no pure human love. Pure skin on skin. That's and when it. she took her clothes off, was it amazing? Every time that she does, it is. In other words, no cellulite. Where you look like a Barbie. You look like a human Barbie. And right? she loves when you say that. You know, that's the thing. Here's something I found out that's shocking. That women who are beautiful, like Beth, you know, like Mish, they, I assumed in my life that those beautiful women know it. No. And that they... 
that I'm stunned Beth by Beth told me last night how ugly she is. Oh, okay. God. I said, so thank excited. God you think that, because right. th- that, that helps me to take advantage of how beautiful you are. Ooh. Well, I just, I couldn't, I can't sort of believe that, you know, I'm, I, like, I can't believe that they don't live knowing it. I think if you're like the normalish woman like me, right, like chubby and overweight, whatever, you don't pay attention to stuff like makeup and lingerie, you assume that those super girly, sexy, right. beautiful women walk around with an air of, aren't I the goods, right? Were you, were you ashamed of your body? Were you like, I'm not good enough to take my clothes off, let's put the lights down, I don't want you to see me? Yes. You were. Did you keep your shirt on? Do you keep your shirt on? Oh, no, honey. No, it's not like ashamed, like, oh, don't look. But, you know, listen, I'm 200 pounds. She's 100 pounds. Right. I was afraid I would roll over and smother her in the bed. I didn't know. You know, I was like, honey, be careful, because I, I don't know if you're or used to be, but she's, she's so... Do you suck in your stomach? Do you start to worry, like, hey, you know, I'll try and look good here, and, like, you know, know. I'll, I'll try to look fit. there, I will actually show you my stomach, and the sucking in hardly even helps. <laughs> had I'm she really ever been with a large woman before? Yes. She had? Yes. She's been, you know, she's had, you know, she doesn't, she's not invested in... The like she's not. It's not about looks for her, which obviously. Yeah, right? same with Beth. Right, it's not about that. Do you do what I do? I walk to the bathroom backwards, oh so that God, she can't see my ass. <laughs> I'm not really? kidding. Yeah, I have cellulite. But wait a minute! You showed your ass on national TV. Yeah, that was a big. Show it- that was maybe the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> Even well, we all know your ass, Howard. Even Beth said to me, you know, like when I was seven, I saw that on TV. And oh, I, my I thought God. It was disc- whatever. I don't know how old she was. <laughs> but, you know, well, she had to be around there. <laughs> That's got to hurt. She, she goes, oh, yeah. What's the age difference with you two? What's the age difference? Not much. 19 years. <gasps> But I look, I look incredibly young. So I know you do. I've yeah. been around you. Yeah, it's I'm, hard. The yeah, pheromones are flying. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't look weird at all when she's with me because you know, listen, you Beth, look, you're evenly matched. Beth's turning forty, and I'm, you know, I'm fifty-seven. Yeah. Well, you know, honestly, you do look pretty amazing, Howard. I got to tell you. Exactly. You so do you. Fit. Well, honey, I could I could use to lose about forty pounds. But do you think you'll down. lose forty pounds now that you're with this new woman and she's so? Well, here's the thing. I uh, actually have lost some weight already, and uh, she's very interested in health, right? She eats right. healthy food. She eats. She works out, and she keeps saying to me, um, I want you to live. You need to live. Was she, in the, was she in the audience for the first show that you did yes. at the uh, Oprah thing? Oh. Of course. Yes. That's the greatest aphrodisiac. <laughs> if she wasn't turned on before, when a, when a woman sees... And ro- all your glory. Well, oh, even Beth says, when she sees me working the radio controls, it turns her on. Well, you know, it's funny because she came to the rehearsal and uh, we had a rehearsal on Sunday because we were going live yesterday. Right. So she, for the first time, sat and watched me sort of do what I do. And Do you find yourself trying to make your job look more complicated in front of her so that she's even more impressed? Or like that use, you have to tell people what yeah, to do? Like, use, like, like start bossing some people around or tell people <laughs> like, like some television terms. Like, yeah, well, you know, we got to sweep this quarter hour, please. Uh, you know, I know about this. <laughs> do you find yeah. yourself doing that? I do that with Beth. I think I do it a little bit, but I will tell you this, that um, I am always bossy. So it wasn't like I was acting. You should have fired someone right on the spot. That would have gotten her. She would have been naked in your room (laughs) within two seconds. With all the kids, that wouldn't have been good. But she was sitting with the kids, and so I, I didn't even realize that it was, you know, it's the first time she sort of had seen me, like, in that work professional right. mode of being the boss. And so I was doing what I do. Like, you know, we're not going to use the two-shot. We're going to use the one. Yeah. Please have the jib when the boys come out. <laughs> <laughs> boys. I was doing all that, but it was right. real, right? And then we go out to dinner, and she goes, it was amazingly uh-huh. exciting to watch you. Do. I'm like, to watch me at rehearsal in my sweatpants? She's like, honestly, honey, you don't know. It's, uh, I was like, oh, my God, you're going to have to come to work with me every day. Are you making this- love to her every day? Well, honey, it's pretty new. And right. I would say we have a very uh, affectionate relationship. Do you ever make a love with her back in your office at work? I have not, no, because there's many people here, right. and there's usually at least a child or two. Are you guys obnoxiously affectionate in front of uh, the staff, or do you keep that under wraps? Um, you know, I don't think obnoxiously, but my children do say, like my 11-year-old boy, oh, mom, get a room, which is now his favorite line. Get a room. So every <laughs> night you're making love to this beautiful woman. I wouldn't say, you know, every night, honey, I'm 49 and right. I'm tired. And when I did, like, you know, the build-up to this show, we did two rehearsal shows every day because I couldn't get it right. I was, you know, we, it's an hour show, right? The, the shortest I ever did when we were on tape, not live, like we did last night, like we're going to be from now on, right. I did an hour and 22. Wow. wow. And I was like, what the hell is happening? Right. I couldn't get it to an hour. And so then the Thursday, I was really frustrated. We had done this piece with the Broadway kids from my school.
school dancing and Javier Colon was singing and, and I came up and said at the end, thank you kids, give Javier some love. And they all just spontaneously ran and grabbed him and I said, what do you have to say to him? And they all in unison said, thank you, it was adorable. And I said, we'll be right back after this. And then I hear from the booth, uh, we're going to have to do that again. You forgot to do the NBC plug. You did not say NBC, uh, the voice on NBC. I'm like, I'm not doing it again. Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. If those imbeciles who run that own network had any brains, they got no programming. They have no ratings. Honey, if, it's if hard you to start a go, network. Listen to me. If you want to go an hour and a half. You think so they should just let her go? Let her go. What else oh. they got to do? <laughs> do it, what, they got to get to what? Reruns of what? Well, uh, so don't they have some kind of Oprah show on after They do. You? They have a brand so new Oprah start show. Start the Oprah Life show. Class. Start the Oprah show. And uh, let's say Rosie goes an hour and 25 minutes. Uh-huh. So well, start the it show. It is an Oprah show, though. So what? Well, you they, know, you all they got is empty slots. <laughs> well, we got to have programming for commercials, but you have to remember when networks started, like Fox, you know, they just did one night. Right. When networks, when CNN was on, nobody watched it for three years. The normal platform to launch a network on cable is anywhere from three to seven years. But that's so, why I'm saying they got you. You're high profile. You're getting great reviews already. Let her go. Do your thing. Give let, her a four hour show. Why does it have to be? <laughs> let her go for four hours. Who cares? Yeah, you know, all of a sudden I'm going to be doing Sabago. Gigante. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying if you're there anyway and you feel like going, go. It's live. Go for it. Well, I got to tell you, we had Russell Brand. Have you had him on your show? Many yeah, times. Fabulous okay. guy. Genius, too. Right. right? Yeah. This guy's a genius. And he could have went forever. Right. right? I, I, so I actually what? hated it. Hated having to say, we'll be right back with the game. I wanted to just stay with him. So why didn't you? And then we let... have an hour. It's a regular TV show. We have an hour. But why can't you say, listen, they've got nothing on. The entire day gets zero ratings. Well, they got Rosie you. has a new girlfriend. She wants to get back to no, her. No, she doesn't. <laughs> listen, she's got plenty of time. How long, do, how long can you, in a session, can you make love to her? I know <laughs> gay women will go for hours. Yeah. Of course we will. Right. Because there's no, you know, it's not as though one and we're done. I have to run out and get a blue pill, right? <laughs> there's lots of caressing and touching and all the stuff that apparently bores you men. Well, we you know what? For hours. I'll let you know something. I'll let yeah. you know a secret about this man. Yeah. I like all that stuff. But uh, Beth you. is bored, but she wants it. Uh, she Get wants off. it. She, she's like, let's go. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, Stop yeah. With all the fooling around. She, doesn't, she is uh, very uh, different. Well, she's definitely not a lesbian. I can no, tell you that. No, no, no. She's not. I no. told you what happened. Beth went for a massage. These women. She, did you hear this, Rosie? I did not. What's the massage? Story? This is some sexy story. <laughs> you got to hear this. Well, 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 there's another massage story I'm not even going to go into, but just the other day, she goes, she stops in some place. It's a little nail salon. Little nail salon. Right. Korean woman. Uh, you know, so Beth's sitting there waiting for a nail salon. She says, oh, do you do those massages? You know, you like know, in the a chair massage. Yeah. chair massage. Right. They do like your neck and your right. arms. Right. Right. The woman goes, uh, you'll come to back room. Uh, Beth goes, oh, okay. You know, she thought it was a little weird. Goes yeah. to the back room. She puts her neck in the thing, you know, like the... Put you know, her face in the cradle Yeah, you understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a couple of minutes later, she goes, the Korean woman goes, do you mind? And she goes, what? She goes, I take shirt. So she lifts Beth's shirt off and takes her bra off and starts to rub her sides and her breasts. Seriously? I swear yeah. to God. And uh, she's telling me this. I go, don't you know that's inappropriate? <laughs> And she goes, well, yeah, but it felt good. I said, okay, wait. Yeah. She went to get a mani-pedi, right. and she got a boob massage? Yeah, <laughs> and, and then a guy walked back there, and she says it was nothing. I said, are you... What? I, I, I don't even... I'm, I'm fl She's like little Annie Fanny. She's just like... <laughs> did you ever read Playboy, little Annie Fanny? No. She Everywhere she went, people were taking her top off and <laughs> doing things to her. Wow. And so what did Beth do? Did, was there she, a happy ending? I, that's what I said. I said, honey, did you get up and leave? She goes, no. I, she rubbed me and it felt good. And then, I, and then she was done and it was about 15 minutes and that was it. Oh, so she didn't try to go downtown? No. All but right. she did say she rubbed her thighs. Yeah, well, because she was wearing cutoffs. But her they don't thigh. usually touch yeah. your thighs in a <laughs> no, chair. I don't know what her was going on. Thighs at a nail salon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, but the, the, the I kicker think is. Beth she... may have said something in Korean. <laughs> <laughs> like massage. I think so, too. She was like, can you do me almost right to the edge of glory? I don't know. Sounds to me like you're liking this whole Chicago setup. I, I can't even believe it because, you know, 
I still think they could have done the show from New York. Well, we were going to do the show from New York, truthfully, but because the Oprah show was winding down, didn't end until May 25th, by the time that we had all of the studios to choose from, there were no studios that I wanted to work in. You know, I'm very spoiled. I was at 30 Rock for six years, right? right. And then when I did The View, it was over on the west side. Literally, there were rats in the dressing room. Like, Ooh. they would chew through things. It was really near the, the river, and it was not a, a good environment. I, I didn't want, like, one of those Unitel all the way on the west side. And so of the choices, we didn't have many. And then, you know... Know, Oprah said, you know, if I, I can get, give you the jet, you could go back and forth. Now, initially, Howard, we weren't going to do this kind of show. I right. was going to do Oprah show, right? Well, we thank gonna... God. Uh, exactly. did someone, thank I said God. someone got a hold of Rosie. You, I heard the original description of the show. Right. It was some serious issues. This or that. I said, listen, 7 o'clock at night. People want fun. Have some fun. Have yeah. some fun for Christ. Right. Well, sake. we were originally at four o'clock. We were going to do fill the spot that she left vacant. Five right. million women watching. Right. That was the goal. Was to do her show with her staff at four o'clock. Bulk tape a bunch of them. Be here for five days. Be home for fifteen days. Right. Be here for five. Day. That was the original plan. Then around July fourth, they said we're going to put you on at seven to launch into the new nighttime programming because there's all new programming that started yesterday. Right. Right. So I was like, well, at seven o'clock, I can't do a one hour single topic just for that reason you know if it right. worked in fringe they would put all those shows on in fringe it doesn't it's game shows and entertainment and that's what people want yeah and so i was lucky i think because i don't think i would have been good at that other one either howard because you know i get pissed off about things that i feel are unjust right and then i'm not entertaining uh i think some of that's entertaining i do i like when you're opinionated i don't want you to go like sort of like uh you know i'm gonna hold back here i like when you let it go no, I, I won't i won't be holding back and, sp and the gentes who watch that stuff will love it believe me i'm gonna watch yeah i would have watched last night except yeah that i caught the first part and i was like wow rosie's doing stand-up this is great yeah yeah good yeah. for you I'm, I'm happy for you and believe me it's uh it's good to uh, see you back at work i figured you'd go back yeah, and, and you, know, you you were the reason that I actually uh, did it because before I went on the radio, I was thinking, well, I'm not going to do any. I'm I'm 50. What could I do? And and I loved doing that radio. If they had only paid me a penny, I would have stayed. Right. And um and then it all you know here it here it is. I are you still affiliated with Sirius? You are right. Yeah, totally. And I loved it. I, actually, I loved doing the radio. And I never used to listen. Now I listen all the time. Are you I, like? Are you are you broadcasting your nightly television show on Sirius the the yeah. audio portion? Yes, they oh, are, good. and okay. I'm doing like twice a week answering questions for an hour, having call-ins about topics, so I'm still going to have a, a presence there on, on stars. I would have much preferred to be on Howard 101. Yeah. Well, me too, but that yeah. evidently wasn't in the cards. All right, listen, watch the Rosie Show, weekday sure. nights at 7 on OWN. She's in a good place. You can see, she, if you see these pictures of this woman she's banging, <laughs> you can see why she's in a good place. This one I approve of. Thank you, Howard. I All thought right. so, actually. Second date, I thought, when Howard Stern gets a look at this one, he's going to be a happy man. Oh, my God. And you know, I have to have her over in the summertime so she can wear a bikini. <laughs> will, my friend. Uh, oh, and yes. Will. And that is something... Proudly. Even if you can't make it, send her over. <laughs> okay, I'll be there in a moo moo. She'll right. be in a bikini, all right? Good luck with the show. All right, thanks. We'll Howard. all thanks tune in. And have you met her parents yet? Yes, I have. You're already? Honey, we're gay women. Come on. Uh, we you met the family. Right we're, we're getting wedding invitations printed. You'll be invited. Oh, are you getting married? I think it could be in the cards. It's legal in New York. Have you asked her? Um, I think we've discussed it. Wow. Oh, wow, this is moving fast. You know, Howard, come on. I'm 49 and I'm gay. Wow. Well, you know I, the I, old joke? What is the old joke? What does a lesbian bring on a second date? A U-Haul. <laughs> <laughs> what does a gay man bring on a second date? What second date? <laughs> Good night. I'll be at the gay yuck yuck hut for the next two weeks. But if she wants her own kids, you can't get started with that again. I see already. Listen, the two are living with Kelly. Yeah. You got the one with you. It's, you're, yeah. you're downsizing. Yeah. It's enough for the But can kid. I tell you, for it's me, an, honey, it's enough can I tell for you. you the truth? Yeah. To hold a newborn baby, I don't even need any antidepressants. Go to an orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> hold an yeah. baby. I'll That's come home with 20, like Mia Farrow. <laughs> well, are you, what medications are you on that you're so happy? Uh, well, I'm on a very low dose now of Effexor, and uh, what sort is of that? weaning off of it. But I'm actually, you know, I'm in a good place. i got to say, my hormones are balanced. I've been doing my TM, mister, for about two oh, years. Wonderful. Oh, very good, yeah. Yes, I do my 20 morning, 20 at night, and I'm in a good place. Excellent. All right, there very good. I'm happy. 
All right. Good to talk to you all. All right. Watch the Rosie Show weekday night, 7 o'clock on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Has Oprah mentioned me? Oh, yeah. We talk about you often. <laughs> I bet you, you couldn't have me as a she guest. She probably doesn't bring you up at all. I don't think Oprah would let, let me on the show as a guest. Will you come? Listen. To, for, to Chicago? No. But listen come to on, me. Come on, Howard. No. A whole hour. You and me a whole hour. A whole hour? One hour. Just you and me. But do you think Oprah would want that? I am sure she would. Really? Yes. I'll, I'll fly on my jet. I know you don't like to fly. What do you mean, your jet? They give me a jet to go back and forth. Oh, you're kidding. What a mega deal. This is deal. a good deal. What, what, what are they paying you? Claudia getting wanded every <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're right. kidding. They gave you a jet. Yes. Not and, to keep, but to use. And you can use that for carte blanche? Like, uh, like you decide, I need to go to New York tomorrow. Yes. Oh, my God. What are they paying you? Good money, my son. Good money. Are you getting... I'm going to guess. You know, I haven't even thought about what you're getting. Think about it. Are you getting $15 million a year? Uh, here's what I would say, Howard. That's uh, very in the vicinity. If we, were wow. near, if, we were, if we were on Prices Right, you'd probably get a second guess for that. But yes. I'm under? You're very, you're, you're very close to the, to the number. Oh, my God. It's not a bad gig, honey. And, and but, they're very but also, generous. And, and bonuses? I got it all, like you do. Well, I mean, like I do, then you'll be lucky then to you'll collect. Be fighting. You'll be in court <laughs> trying to get well, your bonus. I, they gave me a bonus. I hit a home run. <laughs> no bonus. They said uh, you, I read the contract the wrong way. It wasn't a. You didn't hit a home run. You hit a grand slam, and they wouldn't yeah. have this serious XM if it wasn't for you. But it's no hundred million dollar deal, honey. But believe me, it's going to take care of everything I need. Wow, that's beautiful. It's a good thing. Good for and you. And listen, can I tell you, if I find a gold star lesbian, I'm going to call in with her. All right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, where is your girlfriend? Is she there with you? She's with my daughter, taking her to school right now. Oh boy, she really is moving. She's fast. moved right into the chores and everything. Yeah, honey, she knows what she's doing. She figured out how to work the remotes in the new house. That's why she can never leave. I'll never be able to watch TV. Next time you call in, have her at your bedside. All right, baby. And uh, uh, believe me, you'll leave the phone down. You won't tell her I'm on the air, and I'll listen to your love making. <laughs> All right. All right. That's a deal. And what are the kids calling her? Hot mommy. <laughs> what are they calling her? Uh, well, you know, it's funny how they used to call me more mama, yeah. right? They, I, she said, I, uh, what name do you want them to call you? And she said, how about mini mama? <laughs> I'm like, that's pretty funny. But um, it's, it's cute because, like, my daughter, she drives my daughter to school, Chelsea, and Chelsea brought her into the school, and everybody's like, who's this? And she said, it's my stepmom, right? Which is really touching and beautiful. And uh, it, it's good. It's all good. She's really lovely. And, and we will all have dinner, I swear to God, and um, we'll make it work. You will not go to the Hamptons every weekend. Right. You will meet me in the city. No, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking no, forward to taking... Street. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to a private jet ride. <laughs> Honey, you say you're in. I'm flying you. We're doing it. And you're not catching any gay vibe from Oprah. You still claim she's straight. I, I Not only that, I'm positive. Positive. I'm telling you. I'm 100% positive. All right. That's... Uh, all right. 100%. You know, but your gay dark can be off. We've right. just learned that. Say, then again, no, you don't know. I Rosie... I'm sleeping with, I did not think was gay either. Rosie no, hit on that? Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And she wanted to find. I asked her to do it. Uh, oh God, Howard! Hey, hey by the now way, you'll never be on the show. Shut the hell up. <laughs> here's something we can talk about sometime when we get together. All right. So I was invited to a party at someone's house. Uh huh. Yeah. I walk in. They say uh, Barbara Streisand wants to talk to oh, you. Yeah. Oh my lord! When was this? This was over the summer. I told Holy you to come crap. out. Holy! And so, it, listen. Whose house? Sandy Gallon? Something? No. Woman named Donna. Okay. I go over there, and they say Barbara, out of everyone here, wants to speak with you. Yeah. I walk over. Yeah. And we entered it up for about an hour and a half. I'm telling you, honey. Just the two of us, very deep conversation, Miss Streisand and myself. And that. I brought your name up. Didn't it? What? Beautiful. Did it feel good? Yeah. Sure, it felt good. But listen, who likes me? <laughs> I mean, who knew? Who knew Barbara Streisand liked me? Did you bring up my name? Did yeah, you bring I did. And what'd she say? She said, oh, yes, yes, of course, uh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, you know, she I'll likes you. That. She likes you. I know she does. She stayed at my yeah. home. I'm recording an album with her, actually. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. album, Howard, Howard Stern and Barbara. Yeah, I feel like, only. I got to admit, I felt kind of good about myself, you know. That, How could that, you not? Yeah, I mean. Well, you're a Jewish guy from New York. Right. She is the biggest Jewish star from New York in the history of the world, and she's the most talented woman that ever lived. Yeah, and then so then she goes so, so then she was supposed to come over to my house the next day. Uh huh. What I had, happened? I had to leave. I had to go back for work. Oh. So uh, I was like, You mean you didn't take a personal day? 
Yeah, yeah no, I, yeah, I took a personal day. <laughs> and so, uh, no, so, I, so that didn't That's happen. That's sacrilege. She asked you, she, she was going to come to your house yeah. and you went into the city to do a radio show yeah. rather than hang with Stripe? That's things? right. Yeah, yeah, well, listen. You know, you, the you, woman's you, almost seventy years old, Howard. Yeah, she was terrific. She really, she really was really, really interesting. We talked about just about everything. You know, I don't is. even think of her as an age. Uh, well, I tell but you she's what, exactly twenty years older than me. That's how I know. Wow. We had a fascinating conversation, actually. And she's one of the smartest women. She's all politically astute. She's got amazing. She's amazingly well read. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. She kept up with me. No problem. Oh, yeah. kept yeah. up with you. That's right. You know yeah. what an intellectual I am. Right? <laughs> I didn't know what half those topics I just faked <laughs> my way no through. I have no idea what she was talking about. I have about. no idea what anyone's talking about. I just go, oh, yes, yes, I agree. Yes, I, I feel I agree. Yeah. I feel that way. I'm a big <laughs> dummy. Uh, anyway, listen. But I'll tell you about that sometime. All right. But listen, yeah, you guys have things to talk in, about. Invited to your house again. You cancel show the next day, and you call me, and I will fly in. All right. You got it. To the Hamptons. Imagine that. That would be some scene. All right. Listen. Watch Rosie's show weekday night. It's 7 o'clock on yeah. own. She's back on TV and um, right. and uh, getting fabulous reviews, and, and I will be watching, too. All right, Rosie. All right. Thanks. Bye, uh, guys. Have fun. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Right. John Lieberman's here with the headlines from the Howard 100 Newsroom. This guy works his ass off. He's If you're doing something wrong, he's going to find out. So just give yourself up right now. This guy's a hard-working, hard-hitting journalist. Yes, John. Scott the Engineer has once again been approached by the Professional Bowlers Association to play in their upcoming World Series of Bowling tournament. Scott, sources say, is trying to drum up support around the Stern channels oh via emails God. to send him to compete again. You know what? What are these emails? Who's he sending them to? Did uh, he send please. you an email? You know what? <clears throat> so about a month ago, the guy he comes to me and he says, or Doug Goodstein came to me actually, okay. you know, from Howard TV. And he said, hey, you know, Scott's been asked to go bowl again, uh, the PBA tour. I said, yeah. He goes, well, you know, last year we covered it on Howard TV, and, you know, what do you think? Do you want to do it again? You know, Scott approached us. He'd be interested. I said, look, let me think about it. So I'm thinking about it. I go, you know, from what I remember, I watch Howard TV. It wasn't that big. It wasn't deal. that interesting to begin with. Scott stands there like a lummox and bowls, and he bowls okay. He didn't do great. He didn't do bad. He just was, he was, just was boring. Okay. It was fine for what it was. I wasn't sitting and pining away for Scott to go back on the yeah, PBA tour. Yeah, you haven't tour. been thinking about it. Yeah, well, Scott's been thinking about it. <laughs> well, he had a great right. time. He had a great time. And, and don't forget, he left here for like a week or two, and if, and no one missed him. <laughs> and that's a big, that's big, that's problematic when you leave and nobody knows you're gone, because it makes it seem like you're not that valuable. So then, Scott. Uh, so I said to Doug Goodstein, I don't, th I think we'll pass on it this time. I said, I'm, you know, I don't see the merit in it. Right. Well, next I get, I guess they told him no, and Scott's. Sort of having an inner tantrum. He wow. writes me a direct email. Ah! And he goes, uh, I don't know if you are aware of this, but uh, the PBA has uh, asked me to There's bowl a again on, my yeah, on, on their tour. So, in other words, so, he got the no from Doug. He got the no from Doug. Now he's writing me. And he wants to get a direct no from right. you. I didn't even write him back. Never responded <laughs> to his email, right? I never responded, no. and okay. I never and okay. I never fucking will. Then, so then I write Gary. Wait, that that's rude. Okay. Oh, good. That's, that's really rude. rude. And you're rude. No, I'm not rude. You I, were told no, no by Doug Goodstein. I wasn't told no. I never got an answer. That's the problem. Well, you're I rude. never got an answer. All right. So, I'm not. Rude. First of all, you don't I ask, ask a me. question around here, and and people freak out. What yeah. the fuck is that? You don't ask Please. me that. I, I don't you don't ask bother you. me. When do you don't ever bother write me? You. Yeah, don't bother me. Wow. You Who don't the bother fuck me. are you not to bother you? I'm your boss. If the, yeah, I know that, but I and can't you ask you a rules, question? Right? No. Holy no. shit, what you the fuck can't. is wrong with you? Because you know around here you go to Gary. You wow. don't come to me directly. Well, I, 
Because you were already I told I did, but no. I never got an answer. Doug Goodstein told you no. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He's coming in to tell you. He's coming in right oh, now. Now, he's going to... Listen. <laughs> this is what gets him worked up, the bowling. Not the wife calling in. He could care less. I'm this gonna, is what's no, going to get him worked up. No, that's another fucking issue. So, Doug here's, told, no, here's, here's my Mr. issue Mr. Trader over here. Throw here's, anybody under the bus he can. Here's my issue Doug, with you. Doug, you never gave Wait, me an answer. After I wrote no to you, Doug, what happened? Did you tell him no? I said he to I, he said, said he never got an answer Howard from you. Said, I got a weird vibe from Howard. He didn't seem really into it. I followed up with an email to you. Right. Didn't hear back. It was fine. Uh, Scott, yeah, so did I not so tell Doug, you? So so that so listen, Scott knows around here. You don't bother me with your shit because listen, I don't like saying no to anybody. That's right. And you go yeah. That's what you so were, say you no. Were, be, no instead of a no answer. No. You go to Gary <laughs> like you do on everything. I did else. go to Gary. Do you ever write me once asking Gary, me about your job? Gary do you never ever came ask back me about to me? what you should be doing every day in your yeah. studio. No, you Gary never Gary. came back to me. You want a bowl so bad you're throwing a tantrum. Well, I'm not throwing so a listen tantrum. To this. Listen, this is what matters. Listen, so wait, wait, I'm not done. So then <laughs> Scott doesn't hear back from me. Because he yes. knows what that means. I don't write to Scott about his personal bowling. We have meetings for that. Gary, he has a conduit to go to Gary. He can go to Doug Goodstein. And when he hears that Howard's not interested, take the fucking hint. No, okay, fine. Don't cover up. it for Howard TV. That's fine. Okay. I don't. So I, then, I, then, then, <laughs> I, I didn't, he gives up on me. Let me, let me yeah, Tim did. comes to me. Ah, uh, he went to Tim. Yeah, oh, he's going to everybody. He uh, came to me. Right. And then you, you, we discussed it, and t I said to All Tim. Right, so Gary then comes to me. He, so, so Scott knows so what to do. So you're getting, you're still getting questions well, well, about well, 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 wait a second. In between Gary, I walk by Scott's studio, and Scott <laughs> says to me, uh, you know, I, I uh, want to go bowling, uh, something <laughs> along those lines. <laughs> So I had just come off the air. My head was fucking spinning. Hey, Howard. Just, um, Doug sent you a thing about the bowling tournament. Yeah. Do you have any problem? I don't. I can't deal with it oh, now because okay. I just want to take a break. Go but ahead. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk to Tim. I'll talk to Gary and find out what's going on. Okay. Thanks. All right. Appreciate it. Quite frankly, I was thinking about it. If there was if there was any merit in it, if there was anything good for Howard TV or on the so radio, so you're still considering it? Yeah, I was thinking just about don't bother it. You. I was thinking about it, but he's bothering me as soon as I get off the air <laughs> because he wasn't satisfied that I didn't answer his email. But he's already t gotten a no from Doug. Gary, he went to. So Gary comes to me and I said, "You know what, Gary? I like Scott. I got nothing against him. He wants to bowl. Let me think about this." I sat in my office and wasted 20 minutes of my time <laughs> trying to think if there's wow. any fucking reason I need this guy. And I still was saying, oh, what the hell? So mm. then, I don't know, Gary then... I, I we, dis we discussed it, and then you said, you know what? We need him here. Right. So then, then t Scott had come to me, and I said... Yeah, I mean, he's got a job. But I said, you should talk to Tim. So Tim sat him down and said, no. Did Tim tell you no? No. Nope. What did he say to you? Tim Nobody told me to tell you no. you no. What did Tim say to you? Tim... He Tim came to me and said, as a friend, and first of all, he's not my friend. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to give you advice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what was his advice? Drop the bowling issue. Well, that's... Okay. What does that say? So what, what happened? That's, that's, uh, officially, that is not an answer. Scott, I told you oh that three weeks before God. Tim told you that. Okay. I said, so I was it. nicely <laughs> saying to you, so no I one drop, cares if you bowl. I dropped the bowling issue. Well, then he comes up with a new plan. He goes, I want to take my personal time. So I get a memo from Tim and Gary. Scott is now saying he wants to take his personal time to go bowling. I said, uh, oh, you mean when he has his vacation, it coincides with bowling. I said, that's fine Well, unfortunately, it doesn't coincide. Right. Unfortunately for you. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm... Right, right. So I go, oh, that sounds okay to me. I go, N you mean during his vacation? They go, no, no, no. He wants to take his own vacation, set up his own vacation and go bowling. Uh-huh. I go, well, is he needed here? Because if he's not needed here, why is he here anyway? <laughs> I said, do you guys need him here? They go, yeah, we need him. So I said, well, then there's no issue. Forget the fucking bowling. I want to go. I want to go shoot pictures today right, for my photography. I could be doing today that I don't wanna, mean Scott, you mean I wouldn't be here. The only reason they're asking you to bowl is because you're on this show. Leave the show, quit the show, and go off and become a professional bowler. What are you waiting for? What are you doing? You're nuts. You're going to go campaign? You see how hurt he is? This matters to him more than anything. I, I was trying to get an answer from somebody. What do you think you the answer is? You got an answer. Three guys told you, <laughs> drop the issue. I love it that he says t uh, Tim is not his friend. Tim tries to give him some friendly advice. Right. And Tim says, drop it. And okay. he goes, that's so I not drop, an official I didn't answer. Want, so the show, you don't want to cover it? That's fine. They right. still... We don't want to cover it. They, Nobody cares fine. when you bowl. They, good. That's fine. 
Do Unless they, you're bowling when Do you retard. feel like you have an answer now? Or do you need me to like sit down with you? Well, obviously no. you don't want me to go, so that's the answer. <laughs> you gave me the answer. Listen, you listen gave me the answer. I okay. want you to have everything in life you I, should have. I get it. But you got a job. Listen, I, you're not 12 years old. Uh, no, I'm not 12 You got years a old. job. Okay, so... Do, you, I, either you, you're needed here. I, I do asked have a around. Job. I, I said, does anyone need Scott here? They told me yes. I was shocked. Oh, wow. As much as you are. Yeah, right. Isn't it nice that people need you? It, very nice. So that's more important than going to fucking bowl. What is, is it? Is there some free time you have that you could participate in this a little bit? No, it, it, it ha- unfortunately it happens during a week that the show is here. Oh. Three days, you know. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, so there's your answer. You can't bowl. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I got an answer. Right. I was looking for an answer. You didn't have an you answer. You got five answers. You no. got 20 answers from 20 Doug people. Doug never right gave me an answer. Gary never gave me an answer. Oh, you never gave me an answer. What did Doug Tim, say to you? Off the Doug record. Doug said, we're not interested. Tim said, hey, drop the bowling issue. No one's interested. Gary said to you, it's not going to happen. Okay, so fine. The, the, what, they what, still, what answer were you looking for? They, as far as writing me, the one time you wrote me a personal note is to ask about bowling. I don't know whether you're needed around here for bowling. <laughs> I, I mean, okay, it's you, an outrageous question. I don't have anything to do with that. Gary around here answers all of your questions. Okay. That's the peck. All of a sudden, you break protocol around here, but, but I'm bowling. Meanwhile, you got the answer from 20 guys. I went to guys. Doug first. I didn't go to you. You went to Doug. And you he went gave to you Gary. an answer. I, 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 well, Doug showed interest, and he said it would be a good follow-up. Right. Okay, that's, okay. that's Doug. And I told Doug he's out of his fucking mind. Because <laughs> we do the behind-the-scenes show. Now it would be more... It'd be more <laughs> it's a Scott. It's boring. Okay. Watching you bowl you, is you, like watching paint dry. You get it. My I get fans it. I get who it. pay for Howard TV don't want to sit and look at your fucking bowling. I get it. I okay. know this. What? Listen, I'm sorry. I want so to do then something I was today. Just asking, I don't want to be here today. So what then, should I do? That, who am I going to cry to? <laughs> really? Um, then I was just asking for some personal time off. Three days. <laughs> that, listen to me. Yeah. Personal time. I want personal time. Oh my God! You really do? Yeah. Okay. You don't I get it. You still time. don't get enough. Scott, can I? Have, no, I don't. <laughs> really? I want more personal time. Can <laughs> I have it? You can have. Obviously, oh, you're you laughing about my personal no, time. Yeah. Your personal time matters. Mine doesn't. I didn't say it doesn't. But <laughs> personal time. I said. I said to Gary. I never heard this around here. What is personal time? It's vacation well, time that I get what? from the company. No. No. I, wait a second. He. Exp- I said if it's Scott's vacation, of course he can have it. Well, it's vacation time. But I heard time. that you have scheduled not, vacation. It's not right. Gary, explain this. Explain it to him again. Okay. Personal vacation time. time is vacation time that you get. We've all agreed since we've all worked here that we all take vacation together. Otherwise, it's anarchy. If and you're, I, if you're, and okay. I do that. Personal but days. I, I, are, here, let me. You know what personal days are for. You're like a factory worker, but you know better. Personal days are for a funeral, or a family emergency. Not to bowl. Not to bowl. That's that's not a personal day. I was. That's why I was asking if it would be. If it and would, they told you no. I know they told you no. I, I, I explained what I got, the answers what I got. What do you think the answer is? Did, did anyone say yes? No one said so yes. Did anyone say no. it was a good idea? Did anyone say, I think this might work? Did, Tim said to you, I would drop this if I were you, Scott. Your boss, your but, direct boss said, I would drop this. Listen, I got news for you. I'm going to give you some advice as your friend. I consider myself <laughs> a friend of yours. Maybe, maybe not Maybe Tim. you don't consider him right. a friend. <laughs> the kind of passion you have for this bowling... <laughs> Is the passion you should have for when my equipment breaks. I do. Okay. That's that's what you should be excited about. Forget bowling. Bowling is for going once a week with your friends. You get a little drunk. You get away from the wife. And you sit there and you throw that stupid ball at those dumb fucking pins. Right. The way he yelled at you, Howard, when he walked in, I wish I heard that tone of voice when Lady Gaga's microphone didn't work. Right. You'll never see him erupt. Except for like bowling. he erupted. Yeah. Oh, the bowling. <laughs> well, I, I never got an answer. That's what you know. You but you did. You got an answer. No one. You didn't want to hear what you heard. He said, "Drop you, the bowling." I said, yeah. "Okay, I'll take." So you didn't I'll, like let me the take answer. some a couple of days off. That's not dropping yeah. it. A couple of days off to go bowl. So it's what happens just when an so emergency comes up? So are you so are you needed around here or not? Yeah, I'm needed. Uh, you are. So then, how can we let you go? Okay, I got the answer. Right. But also, Howard, suppose some emergency now comes up and oh. he needs a couple of days. Uh, he already took him for bowling. Yeah, but, but that was good for you guys. You <laughs> talked about it on the air. I remember when he was bowling the last time. We talked. Then then then, then they call and say we want to get on the air with Scott. And I go. I, you know what? I'm not even that interested in getting an update on him. I remember your exact words to me when we discussed it. Was you go, Gary? I remember seeing Scott Bowling show, and I don't remember it being stellar television. It right. was good once, but I don't think it Quite merits frankly, doing it, was it again. Bo- it was boring. 
Well, you should get Greg in here. Greg said it was the most boring week of his life. He said they shot like 80 hours yeah. to get like you know, 10 minutes. Is, I want to do a Robin dating show. I can't get a budget for that. <laughs> no, please send Scott. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, everything was paid for. It wasn't. You didn't have to have a budget. No, I understand no. that. But my guys, they, they get paid to sit there and stare at your ass. For 80 hours. In other words, the crew has to be paid. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not you. Look, Scott may have a future in bowling because the PBA CEO tells us his skills have impressed no. the other Let bowlers. Let me tell you what yeah, impressed yes. have, all right. Here's it's what impressed like the PBA. The when I talk about it, they get attention. Nobody pays attention to bowling until I talk about it. It's got nothing to do with Scott. They're not looking for... If Scott wasn't on this show, no, there'd be no bowling. Why didn't they say quit, Scott, and come on the well, tour? Well, they did invite me even if, I, you know, I said... Well, there you go. They invited me without coverage. You're they right. said, if, if Howard doesn't want to cover it, you're well, still welcome so to good. bowl. So go bowl. I can't because I... Oh, then, you got a then job. I, then I'm so, so <laughs> sorry you've got a job. Then I asked for the... Scott, I'm so sorry for the days you have off. a job. The, I mean, I oh just... Robin, God, I do you have anything you want to do? I'll tell you what I want to do. What do you want to do? I can find something to do. just a question. Should Everybody Robin freaks go? out from a question. Should Robin leave now? She's got something she has to do. But, she doesn't want to say what it is. Okay. So a whatever. Female whatever. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want to do. I, I was just telling do? John Hine this. I've always wanted to go to the Super Bowl. Go always ahead. wanted to go. It's on a Sunday night. Go ahead. Okay. So I've investigated it a million times. About four years ago, I actually got a friend to let me, was going to let me jump on his private jet home from Phoenix. Go ahead. But I still was nervous about when we'd land. So I found out we were going to land scheduled land somewhere between four and five and that made me nervous so i spoke to the guy that runs all the private jets in the country <laughs> he told me the super bowl is the biggest night of the year for private jets of there's, there's at least 300 in whatever town that's in mm -hmm. he said you should land at four but i can't promise you that you will so i said i can't do it right i gotta be here that's right you missed out on the super and bowl been, i, I want to go something i've been trying to do i want to go to the australian open well we well, are working well, during why that don't time you go? It's take a, a personal day miles away i could never get back you know, Scott, which way do you want it? Do you want to be a player on the show and be important on the show? Or do you uh, want to play it that you're so course. inconsequential that you can leave? Like, if Robin said to me, I'm, listen, Howard, I love the show and everything, but I've got to see the Australian Open. <laughs> I, would tell, I would tell her, you're out of your fucking mind. I need somebody here working with me. Okay, I got an answer. I, I'm not you, bitching about You had an answer 20 an answer. times ago. Can I just say one more thing, Howard, just for Scott? And I do mean this as a friend. You know that you've been butting heads with Tom, uh, with Tim and management about stuff here. Do you think when stuff like that's going on, it's a good time to say, can I take two days off when you're trying to s show them your importance here and that we do need you? He wants it both ways. I'm unimportant. I'm important. No, I wanted an answer. An official but yes, writing no. me is, no offense. I'm not trying to sound like some kind of uh, asshole, but like, you know what? If I work Howard. at Microsoft, let me say something. I got a, a brother in law who works at Microsoft. He doesn't have Bill Gates' home, a home, home uh, email, and he doesn't sit there and fucking hassle him. You understand what I'm saying? I, I understand that. About his personal days. That's something Gary handles here. That's his job. Okay. I wouldn't have Gary. If, if, if I want people contacting me, what do I need him for with those big teeth? Wow, I had no idea. Oh, you don't even know what goes on. You're protected. <laughs> you were off in England ignoring the death of Steve Jobs. You're protected from assholes like me. You're Sorry. Not an asshole. Sorry I asked a question. I mean, that's all I was, Listen, trying, that's all I was trying to do, is ask a question. I want to be home with my wife. I mean, okay. All right, no, you know. I, by the way, how'd that go when uh, you went home last night? Yes, I'm not dear. making any comments. Yes, dear. Ooh. Really? Bad it night? wasn't good? Yes, it yes. We asked him about it first thing this morning, and what he say? was stoic. He said, everything's fine. I said, did you sleep well, on the couch? That he I'm says, interested in covering. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah. we <laughs> sent some cameras there. I said, did you sleep on the couch? He's like, I never sleep on the couch. I was like, well, did you sleep well, in a different the, room? I sleep in a box in the garage. What did he say? <laughs> he's, he's the lord of the manor. Of course he He is. said, the floor was a little hard. <laughs> I am the king of my castle. You had to sleep in a different room? <laughs> no. Oh, you vague. Well, what was the problem? I slept in another state. <laughs> The problem. Yeah, was there a problem? You didn't do anything wrong. You were, well, no, I didn't think so. I mean, people piled on in the wrap-up show too, and well, oh, listen, I don't know anything about Ralph that. Ralph and Richie, and and so that that I didn't think was fair. Um, so yeah, I mean, when you get involved with people on this show, right. things you know can go wrong. Right, absolutely. But you're not to blame. Listen, your wife, I, your wife decided to call in. Who told her to do that? <laughs> that was crazy. It, I love people, when I, if your wife called in every day, I'd be happy. I know. Then you could go bowl because then I'd have her. I wouldn't be happy. I'd hire her in a minute. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy. <laughs> right. But people on the wrap-up show suggested callers that I didn't defend my wife. 
Which oh, really? I thought that, you know... Well, well, how are you supposed to defend her? She was doing fine on her own. That's what She's I said. She's a firecracker. That's, that was my answer. Well, I, she didn't need you to defend her. Well, I... I, I you know, I defended her when I thought she needed defending. You know, right. when things uh, got a little out of hand, I said, you know, they accused her of wanting to leave early. I said, that was me. I had to leave early. Right. It wasn't her. She didn't uh-huh. have anything to do with that. You're a beaten man. You can't you can't bowl. And you, and you got to go home and Gotta go to, to Vegas that. and bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Yeah. So she was mad at you. But why was she mad at you? I. Who knows? I, you know, she was a little upset. But did you argue or you just gave up? You know how it goes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know. I'll go uh, straight to the attic. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna. Uh, listen, I, listen. I please know you, let me I go know, bowling. I know you love. <laughs> I know you love bowling. Send me away for a week. I know you love bowling. <laughs> I do. I know you do. Yeah, I do. And it, you know, bo- but listen, the Howard with, TV guys told me it was the most boring. For week them, of their it was life. boring. I could. The, I, the TV I see show that. to me was boring. Okay, no offense. that's cool. I mean, that's... watching you bowl. I'd rather watch Wendy. I'd rather put the resources into Wendy the retard bowling. If the PBA wants to put her on that. Yeah, I'm maybe a, I'll bring him out there. Right. But, um, uh, no, I get I get it. It's not exciting. It really, I mean, for... It's That's terrible. why bowling is having a problem. I mean, but if you're asking me, and I don't like to get involved in this, but I would rather have my engineer here with me I, than I, hear that I, you're off bowling, which I can't really do anything okay, with. Okay, that's... Fine. You know, it would be another thing if you were top of the PGA Tour, and if you don't go, you're going to miss a $100 million payday. And you know what was weird? Like, the whole premise was that, like, Scott's a good enough bowler that maybe he'll win the whole thing. No, no, no. Not only That's did a, he win the whole thing, like... He wasn't he, even qualified. He was just sort of at the bottom. He wasn't yeah. the worst bowler. He wasn't the, a great bowler. It was just it was just such a disappointment on every level. I'm not going to win the whole thing, obviously. Those, those guys are so good that, I mean, it's, But you we know. know. And you're boring, and, and it was And that's the only reason to take time off, if you're the greatest. Like, if Scott was bowling naked, okay, then I could see it'd be funny. All right, then uh, we can work something Once. <laughs> it doesn't take 80 hours to cover that. Believe me, no one wants to see me naked. <laughs> you know, the words bowling and boring are almost identical, <laughs> except for two letters. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> I've thought about it. Oh, when I got that letter, the email Oh, home, your hair must have stood no, on it. I was just Listen, like, oh, shit. I appre- this fucking guy's asking me. F- I, well, I know I told Doug no, or I, or I was thinking about it, but... I now like, I've got a personal. I, I email. And then and then right after the show, he comes up to me. Uh, d- hey, did you get my email about bowling? And I was like, uh, Scott, I, I'm, I'm on it. I, I'm aware of it. You know, uh, but someone will get back to you. What uh, is what is it that I, I gets was, into people around no, here? No, I was being pressured for an answer. They know. They know that they're irritating you. Right. But they do it anyway. I didn't want to irritate Because they know you. I'm a nice guy. Uh, most guys, most people, most guys would just fire him. That's yeah. right. <laughs> they were just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'd say, listen, get, get him get him out of here. Yeah. He asked a question, get him out of here. Right. No, I it's appreciate, not, you can I ask me anything you, you want, way. but when it comes to that kind of stuff, that's uh, Gary's yeah. job. Uh, you know what uh, Gary's I job is. I appreciate you value me as an employee and right. you want me here. Yeah, that's right. I, I get it. Yeah, what I, are we paying you for? No, I get it. I understand and I'm grateful for that. So go get to work. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, leave it there. Yeah, leave it there. Get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Get passionate. <laughs> you don't know Ooh. what goes on. <laughs> and you and saw how he came in? The way he, I mean, that was amazing. It's been festering. Like Uncle Fuck Fester. Everyone. You know, he looks I need like, an answer. He looks like Uncle Fester, and he was Fuck festering. Everyone. I thought his head was going to spin. That vein popping out yeah. scared me. Yeah. And I mean, you, you, you've covered war. I've seen a lot. I've been to Iraq. I've been to Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> I have seen a lot. <laughs> that vein <laughs> might have scared me more thing. than the streets of Baghdad. That's right. right. That's right. When he goes off, he goes off. Gary. Really? You've seen Scott yeah, over the years get in these types of situations. I haven't seen him this angry since he didn't get his push-up money. I mean, he was screaming. He's like, oh, you're a fucking big shit. I was like, wow. Is he? I, I thought maybe Fred was playing a tape or something. I couldn't believe he was yelling at Howard like that about something like this. Why, you know, it seems like he's cooled down in recent years. He doesn't have these big blow-ups. Why is he so passionate? Like, why is this so he, Okay, he loves to bowl. It's something that's really, really he loves to do. It would be like his version of bowling is me going on tour with Bruce Springsteen. I can't explain to you why he loves bowling, but he loves it. So I get that. I get that this is something that means a lot to him. But everybody on the show has made a sacrifice for something that means a lot to them. Listen, I missed my best friend's wedding. That's no fucking bullshit. My best fucking friend. I was in the wedding party, and I missed it because it was the same night that we were doing a pay-per-view. And Howard goes, I fucking need you here. And I missed my best friend's wedding. These are sacrifices you make, man. And why doesn't... Because over, like I was saying, he seems to have learned his lesson with these blow-ups. But this one just... 
he cannot let it go, and he's that passionate about bowling. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that it's a couple of days away from home. It's fun. It's something that he loves to do. It makes you know when he goes there, they treat him like a big wheel. So I under, I understand all the reasons why you'd want to do it, but we have this. For once, the sad sack was is being treated like a king, and yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, Howard taught me this lesson a long time ago. I, I, there was something going on where I was doing an appearance, and the appearance made me late for work, or or, or some, somehow interfered with something. And Howard said. To me if we don't have this there's none of that if we don't have this show nobody's gonna hire you for fucking appearance nobody's gonna send you to go bowling no one's sending you to the Super Bowl without this doing this correctly all the rest of that shit goes away and so I, it, early on I learned that this is the most important thing this is the core of what everything else emanates from and all of your passion and all of your drive should be concentrated solely on this foundation which is the show that yeah and then everything else is extra right? that you can pull off everything else is gravy <laughs> Howard alluded to the fact that you know his brother-in-law that works for Microsoft doesn't have direct access to Bill Gates. Has our staff gotten too comfortable with Howard? Well, you know what? I, I, that's a tough thing. We have a very small staff. We've all been together a long time. Scott's known Howard for 25 plus years. And Howard's given everyone access. You have access to him. You could write him on Lotus Notes. Everyone has access to Howard. So, you know, it, it, I wouldn't have done what Scott did, but Howard shouldn't be too surprised when that happens. If you're going to give people access, people are going to abuse it. Howard thinks when you give people access, everyone's going to think like him and respect it. But everybody doesn't respect everything in the world. That's a problem. So Scott's not necessarily so far off base or so wrong for emailing him directly, but... No, I think he's wrong for doing it. I think Howard should be surprised. I, 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 I don't oh, exactly. think Howard should be so surprised about it. And he's also needling everyone around here to begin. I mean, this is where... The oh, my God. Yeah, no, no. We know. The news department said to me, you know, everybody knew what was going on. I mean, Scott went to the news department basically drumming up. drumming up this story so that this would happen, hoping that it would be, oh, let's look Let's let Scott go bowling. And now that it's come on the heels of the fact that you know his wife was on the air yesterday, it's kind of like the perfect storm for uh, Scott's anger. Well, I do not understand why he wants to go bowling. You know what he was doing to me for, for weeks? He would try to guilt me to doing more after I said, dude, the door's closed. Just drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. He would say, you know, you really fucked me. You know how much this means to me? Like, yeah, thanks But how so did much. you fuck him? You, you asked? You didn't make the final decision. No, I told, I told him... He didn't want to hear my advice. My advice was to drop it. I said, listen. I, I don't understand I why everybody was afraid to just tell him flat out no. He I came to me. Flat out. No, he came I to me. Just drop it. Here's the thing. He came to me, and I knew the answer was flat out no, but it was Tim's place to tell it. Even Tim's saying, I would drop this if I were you. I would have said. But after that, he did. But I would, I would have said, we discussed it. We need you here, and the answer's no. I don't know why everyone's fucking tap dancing no, I around. Him, I said, drop it. It's done. No, but, you said, but, but nobody said to me. I, I think what he wanted. Wanted to hear was Howard said no. Yeah, yeah but that's and that's crazy because three people told him on facing on behalf of Howard. No, I get it. I understand. Doug, this is vintage Scott, though, right? I mean, when he gets something in his head, yeah, he Listen, just it means a lot to him. We all get it. But you have a job. If it was a vacation week, this would be no issue. We'd be there, and he'd be there, and he'd be in his all his glory. Here he comes. He's going to kill me. He's going right to me. He's going to blame me for everything. Watch him, Scott. And what's your problem? You, why do you lie on the air? Why do you lie? You never gave me an answer. You I never gave you, me an answer. Why do you lie? I can't speak on his behalf, but I told you no reply from him. You told me no reply. Is no. No reply to you. From your email to him means no. Tim told you no. Gary told you no. Gary just don't take it. Gary give him the Scott. Never I didn't lie at all. I told you the no. You told me he didn't get you. an answer. You didn't get an answer. That's to what you, you told me. And to me means no. When Howard doesn't reply, if he was into it, he would say yes. So he didn't reply. Okay. How do you interpret that? No. <laughs> Drop it. I interpret I, that in my world I, as a no answer. Did I tell you? That's how I interpret it. Did I tell you? Did I tell when somebody you, doesn't did answer, that's not times, a yes or a no. Did I tell you ten times that you asked me to drop it? Did I? Okay, so I dropped you covering it. Yeah, but I did. I dropped the whole thing, not just me covering it. I said, just drop I the drop whole thing. I dropped TV, dropped everything. The PBA was still willing Listen, to have me there without I, any I get show that, involvement at all. I get that it's important to you, but... You, oh, if you, you let your director you go away to fucking L.A. with his wife and take a day off, okay? Is that the same thing or not? Well, I'm the boss. Uh, oh, you're the boss, decision. okay? He's I the boss. No, he's the boss, okay? 
he's the boss. So how come the Pace gets a day off to go with his wife? It wasn't even for him to go to L.A. and get a day off. And everybody's fine with that. But all of a sudden, the bullshit starts when I... So don't, don't, don't bullshit me. Because he doesn't work for me. Yeah. You're, you're comparing Apple You can yell at him about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you work here, that's a separate company. So you want to yell at him about that, let him yell at him about that. But he's getting on my case about, you know, taking the days off. No, I'm not. I had no. I would have no problem. It's not my call. I told you from just You've got no answer. Clear you information. you got no, no answer. Replies. In my world, no answer is nothing. It's rude. No answer. That's okay. my world. But when somebody, when here. you, when somebody can't answer you, then it's rude. Okay. If you ask well, you a simple question, you yeah, I did. If you get a simple yes. question, you get a simple answer. It wasn't a big fucking deal. One question deserves an answer. Okay. I, I told him I, he values my employment. All he would have had to say was in a response. I guess it's thirty seconds is too much time for him. Um, I, I get it that you like to bowl, but I need you here. You're a valued employee. Sorry, maybe next time. End of sentence. Okay. That would have ended one month ago. All I needed was an answer one month. ago. Go, the whole thing would have been fucking over. I didn't perpetuate it. He did. He did. That, that's he a valid did. point. I didn't, okay. Everybody that's a valid sent me point. in a circle. That's a valid point. Two more quick things, then I gotta run. Right. Richard Christie's new Charred Walls of the Damned album comes out today. Yeah. It's called Cold Winds on Timeless Days. Richard will be making some appearances does he make any in money Brooklyn with these, tonight. He doesn't make any money with this music, does he? Because I don't he, think so, but I think he loves doing it, obviously. Uh, so. There were a ton of drums in here yesterday. What was he doing? I don't know, but I was thinking about Richard. You know, I, I got a copy of his record. We ought to play a little bit of it, and, shouldn't uh, we? Yeah, I guess. But, you know, it's a funny thing. He's such an accomplished drummer that if he had just kind of like hooked up with the right band, like he'd be the drummer. Oh, he would never hook up with the right, right band. Right, of course not. <laughs> but he would be the drummer like in Metallica. Sure. There's no doubt he could handle that duty. Like mm -hmm. when Lars was here, I wanted him actually to invite Richard up to play because he could handle it. But right. Lars doesn't have a no way of knowing that. Right. And I said, if the guy had just gotten into with anybody, with any half a talent, you know, Metallica or uh, Led Zeppelin type band or something, someone big. Corn, anything. Corn, yeah. corn. <laughs> Robin would be sleeping with him right now. <laughs> he was in corn. But he, he never hooked up. He, he sat in a garage, I think. He was in, in a warehouse, a, a warehouse. storage facility. Yeah, real quick. Uh, let's see our lesson. I don't know the names of these songs. Let me see. Ah, here he is. He showed up. And he hey. writes all of this himself and everything. He writes them all himself. You know, it's a shame. You're such a talented drummer, but you never could hook up with the right people. And why not become well, a session drummer? Why not work with studio? I've, uh, I've done that did before. Did you ever smell him? <laughs> yeah, who wants to be in a studio with me? session. <laughs> no, but you know, there's drummers that are a million times better than me that are never they? make it, too. Yeah, yeah know, it's, it's just the luck of the draw. I was just thinking of you. And I know you're sitting here writing this music. Uh, thank I don't you, know huh? where. I mean, Plus, where, I'm here. Do you I mean, get this, any is, money for this? this is the greatest job I would want. Do better you, do than you get paid band. for this in any way? Uh, yeah, we're st it's starting to come in no, a little bit. Come on, be honest. Did they give you an advance? Yeah. Oh, they yeah. did. Oh, okay. But I mean, most of that goes to recording costs. But yeah, it's enough make, to how pay much money the band. Did you make? Uh, me personally, yeah. uh, you know, maybe a few thousand. Three thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, okay. somewhere around there. All right. Well, okay. did you have to share it with Sal since you guys are? N no, it. but I pay the band members and you stuff. Do. Yeah, right. I mean, is it a band or are these just guys who play behind you because you write everything and well, you yeah, tell they what to do? they I I write everything and they play it, but I treat it like a band because yeah. they're right, my let friends. Let me hear. Let me hear this. All right, that's very nice. That Thank sounds you. like uh, Aerosmith a little bit. I'm reminiscent, a little more mainstream. It's it's that, heavy here. Oh, it does with that yeah. racket. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to start making noise. Yeah, how old are you again? <laughs> 37. Yeah. Still in my 30s. This is good. I like this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fred not good enough to play on your record? I would he's be got, honored. He's got a different style. I can't handle this. You don't do this. I can't handle it. Right. I couldn't play it. <laughs> you have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Who's the guy on the guitar? Uh, Jason Sukoff, one of my best friends. Better than Sal? I don't know about that, no. But he's a good friend. You gotta kill one of them. <laughs> 
Sorry, Jason. Who's singing? Uh, his name's Tim Ripper Owens. He's the guy they made that movie Rockstar about that sang in a Judas Priest cover band oh, and yeah. then joined Judas Priest. I thought Mark Wahlberg was in that movie. He, he plays, was in that movie. He plays oh, he's the, playing him. The singer, yeah. Oh, you mean your friend is who it's based on? Uh huh. Yeah. I met a guy the other day told me it was based on him, too. <laughs> Oh, this just in breaking news. Scott is in the in the hallway screaming right now at Tim Sabian. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, you maybe should be go cover. I got to get out there. We, right. we uh, we'll, we'll pull tape in a minute. We were isolating Scott when he was yelling earlier. It was well, that'll make some good uh, calls. Yeah, good phony phone calls. <laughs> hey, I should play one of Richard's uh, phony phone calls. Oh, you don't want the music? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Is, do any of the other songs sound different than that one? Uh, yeah. How about song uh, nine? I think you would like. It gets right to the point. Okay. This sounds very busy to me. No, I'm not a music critic. Yeah, but right here it starts rocking out. If I was on America's Got Talent, I'd throw you right off the stage at this point. <laughs> I'd hit that big X, man. <laughs> the gong. <laughs> oh, all right, there you go. I understand. It's a heavy metal sound, right? Yeah. How many people bought the last album? Uh, you know, I think we did about twenty-five or 30,000 oh, worldwide. Right. Yeah. Right. Worldwide. worldwide. Uh -huh. How many people are in the world, Robin? Seven billion. <laughs> He's all 30,000. Yeah, Way some, to go, Steve Jobs Jr. <laughs> some kid in Indonesia loves us, though. Well, we have fans in We're every going part to of the Indonesia. World. Yeah, we have a tour <laughs> in someone's living room. I can this music really touches me. I get emails from kids in like, you know, even like Iran and countries yeah. where they know my music, but they don't know Just what I do here. they fly into a building, they're playing this song. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they'll see pictures of me licking Sal's balls on the internet, and they're like, what do you do at your job? We, we conquered three blocks in Japan. <laughs> Woof. That's not my cup of tea. <laughs> There's uh, a song with a pretty acoustic part at the yeah. beginning. I like a song I can get a massage to and, and sleep during it. Wait, no, this is <laughs> yeah. not your album. Uh, uh, this is, this is. <laughs> oh, Yvay. It's not, uh, it's not for me, but uh, listen, I, your fans are out there. I oh, know they love it. And thank you for playing it, Howard. I you appreciate it. You write the words? Uh-huh. What are you singing about? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, heavy stuff. Uh, deeper stuff than you would think I am capable of. All right, I got to take a break. Richard's uh, new album is called what? Cold Winds on Timeless Days. Cold Winds on Timeless Days. Charles, Charred Walls of the Damned. <laughs> I was going to say Charles Walls. Charles Walls. <laughs> Charles Walls. <laughs> Charles Walls. <laughs> Scott, what do you want? You want to get fired? I don't want to. You want to get fired? Tim, you always you want the job? threaten my job. Do you want the always. job? Do you want the job? You always threaten me with my want, job. Do you want the job? Of course I want, you want the, the job. job. If you think you got to fire right, me, then, then do the job. You gotta, I do, do the, the job. job. Don't get nasty with me. Okay? You always job. hang my job over my head, which is pretty fucking rude. Don't hang my job over my head anymore. Go to Gary Page Warren real quick, and I'm going to play you some three interesting Scott things in a row. Uh, <laughs> Gary Page Warren? Yeah. We're going to start with um, him and Tim fighting in the hallway, starting in green. He's really worked up about this. Yes. It's driving this, me nuts. They have video of this if you wanted it also. 30 seconds is too much time. Um, I, I get it that you like the bowl, but I need you here. You're a valuable employee. Sorry, maybe next time. And that, that would have ended one month ago. I wish he'd be in charge of something. One month ago, the whole thing would have been fucking over. I didn't perpetuate it. He did. He said, go you. to him. He, you said, go to him. You said, go to him. He said, I'll talk to him. Everybody said, I, friendly advice isn't an official. No, I told you, don't do it. Scott, what do you want? You want to get fired? I don't want to. You, you want to get fired? Tim, you always you threaten job? my job. You want the always, job? You want the job? You always threaten me with you my want, job. You want the job? Of course I want, want the job. job. If you think you got to fire right, me, then do the job. You Scott gotta, just won't do the job. Don't get nasty with me. Okay? I heard it. You always hang my job. That's not a funny issue because he always does. Seriously. He always hangs my job. That is crazy. Do you want the job? But he. this is the fifth time in the last year he's done that do you want the job? No, I don't want the job. Give him an answer. He wants an answer. <laughs> he wants an answer like you want. Just give him an answer. So yeah, I want the job. But, but this is—he does this to me all the time. 
he wow. hangs my job over my head. But does it? Well, I, I got a different. I, I, I got a different. What do you different, think it is? I, th I think that he's nicely trying to tell you that you need to do a better job or you need to, to, to do what you're supposed to be you doing. Wanted around you. Right. He's no, saying that we like what you do. Baller, I'm not. I'm not looking to be a professional. I, I, I appreciate everything you do for me. I, I don't want to argue with anybody. You know me. No I, one's I, mad. Don't worry. You're all right. You're okay. Calm I, down. I got. I got more stuff to go over. Well, I'm sorry. You got, you got enough to worry about. I do. Believe me. You gotta make sure your wife doesn't call. <laughs> well, I mean, that's why I want to go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> now there's an honest thing. All right, hold on. We got. Hey, go ahead. What else you got? Oh, am I on? You got 45. Scott, seconds. don't worry. Everything's all right. No one's taking your job. Thank you. Oh, there's so much going on. Scott and Tim were yelling in the hall about the bowling. Yeah, that's been the topic of the day. Yeah, they were. And then, then Scott came to me. Tim's always threatening to take his job, but I said I don't think he's threatening to take your job. But he wants to know if you want the job. <laughs> what place is a powder keg? Scott, I know you said no answer means no answer in your book. It, it, no answer is no answer. But in your in your heart of hearts, did you think that Howard no, was I didn't trying to think, tell you no? Yeah, I I don't know what what's in his head. To tell you the truth, do you think he made the comparison to his brother-in-law that works for for Microsoft who doesn't? Does have his direct... brother-in-law deal with Bill Gates or is close to Bill Gates in any way? Does his brother-in-law work for somebody for twenty-six years and has daily contact with that person? I don't think so. But you don't think you overstepped your bounds at all by you by know, asking a question? No, I don't. <laughs> Not at all. I don't. I have I have no problem asking a question and expecting an answer. That's there's no problem. You know, if somebody is too imbecile or you know, it's ridiculous to think that they can't answer a question. The whole thing would have been over one month ago if I got an answer yes or no. End of deal. Scott. We understand you want to go. We need you here. Sorry. Would have been over. Would I have been happy about it? No. Am I happy about it now that I can't go? No. That's life. But I, I, I do think I deserved the proper answer. How much of this is, is about your desire to bowl and how much of well, is this your, is about your, the disrespect you feel you've received? Of course I want to bowl, but it's more about the respect of giving me an answer. I mean, it, it was a great, it was a thrill to bowl. But as you know, it was boring because you were there. Um, it was boring for pe other people. Okay, I get it. Don't cover it. You don't want to cover it. I, I just asked for some time off. I asked a fucking question. If everybody gets out of there, out of sorts for a question, it, you know, just give me the respect of an answer. That's all. What about Howard's criticism that, you know, you never email him about things that you could do better for the show or you don't bring that same passion to the show, I the emailed foundation? Him. I, there was no passion. I emailed him a question. I don't know what the passion is. Well, he's saying he'd like to, you know, have other emails from you asking, you know, what I can I do I send him better? stuff all the time for the show. I'm always working for the show. He knows that. I send him, I got complimented in a meeting a couple of weeks ago. He knows that I send him, I'm always doing work for the show. I send him emails constantly about the show. So I don't know where that came from either. So this just all speaks to unfairness and disrespect from your vantage point. That's how I feel. I mean, yeah, I get it that he appreciates me. That's great, and I love to be appreciated. But, you know, it would have ended a month ago if, if I would have gotten an answer from somebody. And not as a friendly advice, I advise you to drop it. That's, <laughs> what does that mean? It's that as a threat. To me, that's a threat. Oh, I'd like to give you some friendly advice. That, that's not an answer. There's obviously some, some tension between you and Tim Sabian. Does this, does this date back to, uh, does this go much farther back than the bowling? I'm not going into that. And Ash Napkin Ed and Debbie the Pet Lady showed up here, and she's out of her fucking skull. So we're going to bring her in here. Yeah. And, she, and this, dude, believe me, this is no act. She's nuts. Ed. Good hey, Debbie, good morning. Good morning. It's not a good morning, all right? It's really not a good Why? Well, what's the matter? Because I don't get my glasses. I told her to put these in. Because I had a rush because of this fucking here, nut, here, okay? You have, no, just, you have just, no clue just put what on, he did put to me on today. For the camera, at least. No, I'm not wearing put you put those stupid shit on. Your, don't put point the camera at me. Take the shit off. The no! Camera. Debbie, please don't. Oh, I'm not going to. Please don't. Yell. I know. Hi, here. Good morning. Please. Good morning. I'm sorry. I got a headache myself. Right here. Right here. We're going here, guys. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Really, honestly, I'm 
Good move. So I'm gonna, sorry, I don't want to yell. You're good. I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to yell. Sit tight, and we're going to bring in a couple of minutes, right, okay? Thanks. That, I, De- I Debbie, appreciate what's it. the matter? Like, She's a oh, host. Me. Can I tell you a quick story? Really yeah, quick. quick. Well, a quick, a quick story. story. He started at 12 o'clock. He took the trip. He actually made it to the city, right. okay? And then he tells me, I'm coming to your house, Debbie. So at 12 o'clock at night, I'm getting ready at 12 o'clock at night. My son is fine with me. Mommy, why are you bringing this guy to our house? I said, but he's dead. Bro, Brody, he's part of the Howard Stern show. He's not right, enough. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Okay? Okay? So I'm fine with my son. My son is getting crazy. I finally call my son now. We're waiting. Waiting up. 1.30 at night. He tells me, Mommy, where are you coming? No, I fell asleep. Then, Karen, guess what? So I, I fell asleep in the in the he goes, train station. When are you coming I to the train station? Lo- now let me tell him. I Hello, I got supposed to leave my house at one thirty in the morning to come to the train station. So I said, well, I'll be there in a couple. I'll be there a couple of hours, okay? So then I figured, let me call him back to see what he's doing. He, I said, well, uh, you're gonna definitely meet me at the train station. He goes, well, I'm going my way down to the house. Yeah, well, I fell show. asleep in the you're car. On your way to the house. Yeah. You were gonna meet me at the train station. The so me, I had to jump in the, the fucking, fucking shower. The no, fucking no. Hit me with no. The fucking baton. Do, 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 do you think the no? Do you think the do you, do, do you think the do you think the cops no. actually kick no, him out of the train station? Yeah, it might hit me in my car. Do you think the cops kick him out of kick him out of train station? Yeah, hit me in my for sleep. No. If, you, if they catch you sleeping, then they'll probably they'll left. And hit. probably what he did is he, the, I, I got this. Right. He, he's sleeping. He came back because I took his tap. Well, why would he have to get out of here? Exactly. Exactly. He was supposed to meet me at the train station. Yeah. Then I get to the train station. Yeah, I left at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm raging at the train station. I get on track 16. Track 16. Is he at track 16? I'm going to guess no. No. No, I was at track 11. No. Yes, I was. You were not at track 16. I was at 11. 11, yes. What were you doing at 11? I'm at 16. There's nobody at the you train station. Me. Nuts are walking around right. there. All right. I'll be back for both of you in a little while. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to bring you in. I didn't even know how to get to the house. Show. All right, I'm gonna bring you in. Just stay close to the microphones. I'm gonna bring you in. Okay, sit tight, guys. I'll be back for you in just a few you had minutes. Me walking like a nut. I didn't hear you. Walk. You had me walking. You said you knew where to go. Where didn't you say you knew where to go? Ed? I Who did looks know good where to go. Who sit looks down. good? Who looks good? Yeah, but did you said I look good, though, sit right? Over here. Sit over yeah, here. Yeah, sit over here. Now, now sit you, over now here. Now you're ruining. That's Howard's gift. Oh, that's Howard's gift, right? Who bought Howard's gift? That's Howard's gift. We got Howard a gift. Who bought it? Let me see that, by the I'm way. I'm paying you here. We had a better gift. Don't show him the gift. I'm oh, sorry. Who's this new guy here? That's the new gift. Could you take gift. it out? My nerves. I'm shaking. Would you stop? What is that? It's a candy dish. It's a cookie dish. We got him there. I actually had a better gonna, gift for him, but I was in such a rush. I forgot I my glasses. Him, I have no glasses on. I was going to get him... I was going to get checking out to make sure that it's safe to bring into the studio. I, yeah, but uh, you know, you know, we don't. First of all, we don't accept, any, we don't accept any, kind, any kind of food up here. So See, I, I don't know what he, I don't know what they want to do. But I was going to get him a chest set. Yeah, tell him at the chest set. Tell him at the chest set. Maybe it's something we'll leave on display in, in the studio yeah, or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll keep it on display. But nobody. Or Benji will eat Nobody it. Nobody will eat it. I bet, I bet Benji Tell him about the chest The policy is not to accept food for safety. Exactly. We don't know what's in it, who made it. What is in it? I don't know. Anyway, you picked it out. you got to get like one of those uh, food testers. He picked it out. No, nah, nah, we just don't accept it. Like, uh, really? Well, why? The king had like. Because we don't know who made it. We don't know where yeah, it came didn't, from. Didn't um, like a king or I something. I mean, I know you brought it. But you didn't make it, so we don't know what's in it. It was from a bakery, goddamn. Doesn't matter. We don't know who. What the fuck you think we got it from a bakery? That bakery put some fucking bomb in this shit. Why don't you think you got a fucking twanding, twan this shit, what is that and you're gonna see that there's no poison, fucking poison, poison in it? Poison? Like we're gonna poison this anything. fucking house, please. All right, don't, don't give him the fucking gift. I know we should have gotten the fucking. No, he's not. Nah, yeah, stupid. All right, yeah, we'll put it on display. Display, display, display this. I'm not displaying it. I don't want it. I'm listening to the Howard 100 News yesterday, and I think Shuley, yeah, it was Shuley did a report with Debbie the Pet Lady and S. Napkinhead. And the whole thing is that the two of them, remember when they scammed us and they said they were going on dates? A couple, yeah. What's happened is she had completely cut herself off from an S. Napkinhead. Yeah. 
Ass Napkin Ed somehow worked his way back into our life. And now they are legitimately going out on a are date. Are you buying this? Yeah, no, they're here together. And they said, gee, so? we... we <laughs> Whoa, so, what, was what was that? that? <laughs> Who was that? No, 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 no. I moved the microphone still. Oh, okay. that was weird. <laughs> I thought it was a belch. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so they said they're going to be down here. They'd love to get on for five minutes and say hello to the audience and talk about this date. Now, in the middle of talking about the date, she starts screaming at him because her hair isn't going to look good. She's nervous about what she looks like. And it was the funniest report I'd heard in a real long time. In the middle of this report. Uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. Well, they, they, I mean, they, they show up arguing, but she, it's just her. She likes to fight. He, yeah. He's very docile. Yeah, he doesn't, doesn't care. Stuff. So anyway, for five minutes, I thought it'd be interesting to find out what this I'm date is. I'm not buying it because well, they've scammed us before. No, this is the first right. time they've ever physically been together. Really? Yeah. Right. There's hey Debbie. There. And Debbie, Hi, uh, uh, hey, Debbie. Ask Napkin, how are you? And Debbie, uh, how are you? Looking beautiful, by the way. Uh, our, I think. Can I put my sunglasses on? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you have an image to maintain. Is Eight, that okay? No. Eight nineteen oh. to you and one forty three. <laughs> Debbie, uh, first of all, uh, you may thank me for lining up that dog you found and getting him an operation. I don't want to. I don't want to keep these. Can I say thank you, Howard? Yes. Thank you, Howard. I wanted to say thank you so much for our helping stitches. You know, it's funny. I'm looking at you. You are a good-looking yeah. woman. You yeah. are. Come here. Ed. Come here. <laughs> Ed. What? She's an attractive woman. Yeah. I mean, she got nice long hair. A lot of women who get older, they they cut their hair too short. Yep, it's nice long hair. Okay. Don't touch her physically. <laughs> she said I get shot. Yeah, he was trying to get uh, cheap shots off me today during our little date. All right, the two of you kind of met on the phone. You kind of scammed me that you were going out. It was a For funny whatever idea. Reason. Whatever I reason, what I don't know. You wanted to get on the air, but now no. you now you legitimately. Are on a date. On a date. On a real date. This is the first time you two have seen each other. The yeah. first time. Yeah. Are you attracted to him? Well, I like it. You know, physically, he's nice looking guy. I like him, but he he just makes me nervous because I feel like he's not real. Uh, not real. Yeah. You know? Because sincere. is this a bit? Or I, I is it, know. Is it a no, bit? Howard, or is he really into not, me? This, this right. Time is not a bit. You want to know something? I, I agree with her. I have a trouble. I have trouble reading you sometimes, Ed. Why no. is he saying it's not a bit this time? It's yeah. not because I'm trying to um, get close to that microphone. I'm trying. Why does he get the microphone? You, you have, have one. one. Oh my God! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Howard, this yeah. time I'm trying to fuck her. Okay, oh. that's legitimate. Yeah. That's an honest guy. You want to right. fuck her I, I, and leave I, I, her, or do you want to fuck her and have a relationship? Yeah, we, we can relation relationship. No, I'm, I mean, you want a relationship with me, or do you just want a quick fuck? Show me your ass. You know, no, <laughs> you know, you've seen my ass, all right? Stop playing this. He's seen your ass naked? No, not no, naked. No, not naked. Right. I didn't he was that. eyeing me up and down in the terminal. You got terminal. a good figure. You know, yeah, I keep in shape, Howard, and trust me, look at, you know, not, I'm not the brag enough, and hey. he's been worried about my age. You know, I am up there. I'm not going to lie. I'm 49 years old, you look and, I, and I think I look pretty damn good. For my Howard, age, do, okay? she does. Howard, at the end, and never write no the Sibian. No plastic surgeries because I can't afford that shit, you know. So I think for my age, do you, you know, ever put on like when you sw like? Do you ever put on like sexy dress and no, heels and I all that? Do, you always wear pants. No, I'm yeah, I'm I'm a jeansy type of girl. You I know? told her yeah. to wear you a mini skirt. Want me to wear a dress, and I'm and I'm not getting dressed up in dresses. Okay, I'm running around the fucking New York. What the fuck? Do you fuck? have I'm a mini skirt? Do you own a mini skirt? You have nice legs, I bet. I I, I don't wear dresses, Howard. At I'm all. Not, not really into the dresses. Right. You, you like know? to wear jeans. I just and wear jeans and right. sweats. Where and I roll my they... tie my hair back and I'm just more like, you know. The guys must hit on you. Where did they go on the date? What was this date? Well, we're supposed to go on a Robin! Hello. <laughs> Why did you block me off the Twitter, man? You know, I, I didn't block you Yes, you Twitter. did. You blocked me off the... I'll get on Twitter. You're probably not even on my No, Twitter she blocked page. me. She blocked me. From what, me. Twitter? She blocked me. I didn't <laughs> block you. Did you? Did she, she wouldn't even know how to block you. She blocked you from Twitter. She wouldn't and, even and know And another how. thing, Howard, you don't. I respond to you on Twitter, and you don't even fucking respond back. I don't even read it. I've never read a, a comment well, from you. Could you follow me? There are thousands of Howard. Follow me. I don't want to read what you write. <laughs> I don't want. I don't. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I will. Ed, what? I just want to know one thing. I happen to think Debbie's a nice lady. Are you going to go on a date with her? Yeah. And, and I don't believe you're finish a nice the date. guy. Finish the date today. Finish the date, Howard. 
are you gonna tr- I mean are you really it don't fuck her over I know you might get in her pants and fuck her and then if you leave her she's gonna be devastated how did he Could get you? here by the way I oh came in the- Howie you don't even want to oh, know yeah, what he were- put me through I have not got any sleep tonight he told me he was gonna meet me at 12 o'clock he was gonna spend the night and then he'd tell me I'm waiting up at 12 o'clock for him all right? right he made it to Penn Station but he never made it to my house he told me he fell asleep right so I I fell asleep and the cop came and hit me with his baton or his blackjack and then he to make it feel like if I didn't get to the city he was going to leave the terminal and he wasn't going to meet me at Penn Station I got to be honest with you the thing I don't get about this is you seem kind of desperate for him you're hot you don't need yeah, he's him he's constantly putting I'm, you power what the fuck she's are you talking really, about I'm hot too no, but I'm I saying, can get any woman I want you should really hook me up and find me a guy who really wants Robbins, to be with yeah. me okay yeah, but what I'm saying is why are, you, why are you staying awake waiting for him he should be burning to get into your apartment are you kidding me yeah. I can get any fucking woman I want no, what I'm saying is, <laughs> she's worth. Where she's, are they, Ed? Where are they? I, I get them. I get them all the time. Yeah, that's why you had to call me back again, right? Because I, I, yeah, because you, you do you like me though. Do you want to go out with me well, on yeah, the real side good. or what? Yeah, because the look is over there. Look, we got the looks out of the way. You said you like me, so but do you want to go out on a date yeah, again? No, I, do you? Well, we gonna finish the day today? <laughs> are you gonna take me out on a real date? Where I know do you want to go? I no, I want to go on a date. We'll I want to have somewhere. a. We, well, we're kind of tired, but this um, is another scam. No, this no, is not it is. a scam. No, Robin, it is. No, no, no. <laughs> you better watch yourself. No, Robin, it is. <laughs> this is not a scam. I don't really care what it is. I'll listen to her all day. No, but <laughs> I had, bus or train tickets. I heard you on the news. You told Shuley you're going to take her to McDonald's because you don't have a lot of we money. We don't have a lot of money. Right. Now. And that's fine. And you said, but hey, I'm fine with that. I like McDonald's. Yeah. I like junk, you know, the, the hamburger joints, restaurants. I'm not a, like you? a, 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 you know. Are you going to, are you going to leave here? Because I'm running out of time. Are you, gonna, I just want to know. Are you going to leave here and take her out on a date? Yeah, where do you want to go? I go anywhere we want to go that's free and cheap. We don't care, you know. We right. go to McDonald's and we could just take a little but walk. you can't act. Like you, like an asshole. Or in something. McDonald's, like you, you just, have to have well, manners. Well, I have mood swings. I have. You can't act like an asshole. At McDonald's, you can't act like an asshole. Well, gonna, maybe that's right. I've never heard a line like that. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I have, I have, I have very bad mood swings, so I do right. tend to flip out a little bit on a on a real side. So I. Is, but I am in, a, at McDonald's, are you gonna treat him nicely and, and yeah, not yell yeah. at him? Yeah, I won't yell at you, Ed. But I just want you to be sincere right, with me. Let's right, and Ed, and Ed, drop all the bullshit and stop with like, let me see your ass and let me see you. The, I'm not, yeah. You got to be a gentleman. How do you even get a, a date talking like yeah, that? Yeah, right. Yeah, because if we, anything happens with me and Ed, I don't want to be pu- pu- Let's pu- give a hug. I don't want to be... No, wait, 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 wait. If anything happens with us, like, you know, we do kiss or we have whatever... Have you ever kissed him? No. No. Let's do it. We had a hug. I, I hugged him because I was so happy to see him when I caught him let's, in the terminal. Let's kiss for Howard. <laughs> you want to try kissing him? You want to kiss Ed? <laughs> Not on TV, oh no. 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 Don't film. Cut the where's the film? Cut the camera. <laughs> no, no, I can't! It's too right. embarrassing. Right. Give me a hug then. No a hug. Give him a hug, give him a hug. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. oh. 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 <laughs> Oh my God, he almost God. raped her. You're so funny. <laughs> oh, wow, that was romantic. How did he go from being ass napkin Ed to this guy? He's smooth. He's smooth. He is, Ed is smooth. I, Robin, I get all but kinds you don't, of pussy. Boy, you, I know, I heard. You get tons of pussy? I get all kinds of pussy. I don't believe that. I don't either. I don't believe you believe that, Howard. I think Ed's a nice guy, but I don't think he gets tons of pussy. I don't think so I don't either. think you do either. When's the last time you got pussy? Couple months ago. Really? Oh, couple months. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. Then yeah, you but I'm some. not even trying. Right. You fall into it by accident. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, listen. I don't. I don't even care if you're scamming me or not. I find this all very entertaining. And, uh, <laughs> no, this is not a scam. It's we not really our, wanted to. We, I did, really, we did it to you I once. I really like. Uh, to be honest with you, I do have a, a liking for Ed. You right. know, and I really, you know, hope he's not playing me and look, you know i told him to be on, so honest with me because yeah i got little heels on but right. um i told him to be honest with me if we just wanted to be you know to get to go out for our date how yeah. do you look naked good seriously let her ride the sibian no freak you why'd you make a sibian you ride the fucking I'll sibian okay yeah perfect. you would how, ride debbie it. how do you look nude are you are you proud of your body answer those questions how are you proud of your body no i'm not proud of my body oh that's a shame I thought you were. <laughs> I, I'm nice, looking. She's got I'm look, nice tits. Yeah, oh. she does. Let's not talk Ed, about my body. Smooth. Let's talk about 
your body. Oh, I, got a, I got a beer belly. I know. <laughs> what? Are, what? Are How's you? How do you look naked, Ed? You want to see? <laughs> <laughs> He'll show you. Yeah, Toby Debbie would show. It's not you. <laughs> and where's your teeth? Are they falling out of your head? Oh, oh. You know what? I got I want to show you this thing I got for my teeth. All right. Well, all right, listen, I got to move on anyway. Yeah, we, we don't, wait, 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 yeah, right. we don't want to come understand. here to take your time, Howard. Right. Uh, Debbie, we good try, luck on your I've date. I've never heard I hope of you a find, date happening at this time of the yeah, morning. Yeah, I hope you find romance. Oh, I do. I, I just hope he really wants to have a nice afternoon with me. Can I be honest with you? I don't do think... Do you think we make a good little couple? No. No? Because I, I feel Ed's Ed... on the up and up about anything. I'm going to be honest with you. I think Ed wants to fuck you and then... That's it, right? get out of town. tell everybody. And believe me, on some level, that would be humorous because... You know, then you would be screaming and yelling at him, and it would be great radio. Oh, forget it, forget it. You know, yeah. if he plays me, you know it's going to be murder, right? But I think yeah. Ed might break your heart. Gary, bring my bag in. I just want to show him those teeth. No, right it's quick. okay. No, we don't come wanna... on. They look like Gary. No, we don't want to hold them. Howard, up. they right. look like Gary's Ed. teeth. They sell them on, on the computer. Ed, be nice to uh, Debbie, the pet lady. All right. All right. Thank you, Howard. See how it goes. If and you... Robin, thank you. It's a pleasure hey, to see you again. Good to see you, Howard. Debbie. Yes. Can can you give me any contest money or no? <laughs> See, look at him. <laughs> contest money. He doesn't even money. have money. I to came all this motherfucking date. way. Nobody but I didn't tell you, you to. We're gonna go to McDonald's. Don't worry about it. Give us <laughs> money for the date or something. See, Stop this begging. is not about him wanting no, her. We we don't worry. We we you know we we made out fine. We'll we'll we will we manage our little date fine. Right. We're just happy <laughs> that you took the time to to to, to let us. Are up you here. gonna let him sleep over? If he wanted to, I would let him spend the day, and that's up to him. I told him he could come. Are you back afraid to the that he would be nonstop amorous and try to get in your pants every second if he's alone in the house with you? No, he wouldn't actually be alone because my son would be there. Yeah, but your son's a kid. I mean, isn't he? He's a teenager. He's a teenager. Could he beat up Ed? I don't <laughs> think <laughs> he would I mean. like Ed too much. <laughs> right. <laughs> Being there though, um, he actually got really pissed off at me last night when I told him Ed was going to be coming over, and then he was fighting with me. So, it, thank God that Ed didn't actually p- p- pop in. But um, I mean, um, would Ed stay in your bed? No, no. Ed would sleep either in the, in the in the cat room or in the couch. Okay. All right. Well, listen, you two kids. Let me know what happens. Listen, Debbie's very volatile. She's and a sweetheart. She is sweet. Uh, how can you, I get a picture with you? you I never, you never give no, me a picture. No, I, I got to go do the show. Yeah, let him Cock do the show. Sucker. Let me go. Come Peace, on. Peace. Thanks so much. Ed. Thank I'm you. dead. Uh, right. Howard. Eight nineteen. Eight nineteen. My That's friend. That's some Thank code you, of his. All right, Ed. I forget oh, what stop. it means. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you that's one of those guys. He's like, you know, get, get my teeth. Let's take a picture. Yeah, he Give me money. come in yeah. with his teeth. No, there's a guy who's, I believe, is perfectly physically able to work, right? Yes, but I don't know. <laughs> Do you want him working for you? No, but <laughs> right. <laughs> we got high level yes. things going on here. He's able. He's able to work, but, but nobody I'm, wants to work with him. He's a strange guy. How old is Debbie? Do you know? She's, she's forty nine. I was saying to Will, I know this is crazy. I think I, she's good looking. I, I mean, for for a forty nine woman, she's in really good shape. Yeah, she, she looks, looks good. good. That's right. You know, when you're crazy, it, it, it doesn't crack. A lot, a lot of people don't eat when crazy they're crazy. Crazy doesn't crack. But the other thing, we were trying to figure out, she's like, oh, it would have been weird for my son if Ed came over. Where do you think that falls on the level of weird shit in that house? <laughs> very, very slow. <laughs> very low. All right. Thank you. Debbie, come over here. Thanks, come here, you two lovebirds. Come, come talk to me for a second. What's up, Ed, are you really going to treat this seriously and take Howard's yeah, advice and, gonna, and, and treat her like, like the lady that she yeah. deserves to be treated as? I hope he is. Mm-hmm. Ban Mr. Bloodclot. Well, no, you can't ban him. I'm just not going to read it. Oh. Now you can ban Mr. Bloodclot. If I see more trolling, it's going to go up to five years.